talking about gaming, there is going to be some gaming in this episode that we're going to watch. There is going to be some gaming in this episode. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, no, absolutely. A lot happens in this episode. Um, like, a lot happens, but at the same time, like, nothing that matters happens. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, like I, I was surprised, actually, I liked this episode. I was surprised by, like, how much I liked it, because I don't remember it being good at all. See, like, this is usually a, a skip for me, actually, but this time I was like, no, actually, I'm, like, into this episode. See, um, it was the other way around with me, uh, because... You know, while there were, like, things I liked about this episode, certain, like, uh, elements of it, I really did not... I, like, the fucking Derek plotline throughout this whole episode gave me the biggest fucking headache. Like, I... I thought the Derek stuff was actually not bad. What? Like, I... I am amazed by because I do not like Derek as I don't, a character. I, I mean, I don't like, like Derek this is, either. This is like the only episode where I'm like, I sort of understand Derek. And like, no! Even though, like, he is no! like, a fucking idiot. You're gonna make us but, debate. Like, no, but, like, I... <laughs> <laughs> I I just feel like like I understand his decisions. No. And why he's doing what he's doing. No. No. <laughs> the, no. 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 I'm sorry. No. Welcome to the Loincloth Hour, everybody. Yes, a podcast where we talk about every episode of Gargoyles in order and taste each other's taints, apparently. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's, it's hosted it's by two guys. Uh, I am... Group, aka Soup Goblin, aka Manicorn, uh, aka who, Spankicorn. Who uh, I was about to get to that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just, I didn't want to rush you into it, but I kind of wanted to introduce yourself. Okay. And then I'll... <laughs> My name is Sydney. I am um, editor, producer, co host, um, just an all around cool person, I hope. Yeah, you're just an all around cool guy. So, okay, yeah, I'll do my Twitter thing right now. Like, usually we leave plugs for the end, but I'll just say it today. Yeah. Um, if anyone who follows this podcast has noticed, my Twitter <laughs> account has actually been suspended. Uh, the main yeah. Unicorn. So you can find me now. Like, I don't want to get into all the Twitter stuff, but I do have a new name. Mm -hmm. It's under Spankicorn. So if you enjoyed following me before, you can just follow me over there now. I'm trying to rebuild my follower account. So, uh, yeah, it's just, I'm just gonna be posting the same stuff I always do. Mm -hmm. Gargoyle stuff, hot cartoon characters, all that shiz. So, mm -hmm. yeah, please, uh, please follow me so that please. I don't feel so lonely. I think I'm gonna get, do something different and be a little more open-minded and link my safe-for-work, um, areas. Yeah. On, on the internet, because I'm around. I'm actually, um very around and i kind of like do i want to put my safe work stuff out there link it with my my furry accounts but like at the same time yeah. i like i tend to carp carp compartmentalize my stuff a lot too but like it all depends on what you're comfortable doing honestly how, um how many eyes you want on your stuff all that i is. okay so um my name is Sid. Uh, I usually advertise my Twitter at Sid Scripts or um, Alistair Alderman at Fur Affinity. Um, I also make music, interestingly enough. Um, I'm under a few monikers, primarily uh, Stag in the Headlights. Uh, I also do um, video edits on the YouTube channel Sir Neutral. So if I wanted to listen to your music, I just search for that deer in the headlights, or wait, was it deer in the headlights? Stag, stag in the stag headlights. Stag in the headlights? Yeah. Like, where, what website would I go to to find your stuff? Bandcamp.com slash stag in the headlights. Oh. This one time at Bandcamp? Bandcamp what? I'm not gonna finish the quote. Yeah, don't don't do that. Don't <laughs> don't knock on Bandcamp. Bandcamp is one of my favorite music websites because they care indefinitely about you know. I mean, not, not I wouldn't say indefinitely, but like they're much more generous on giving uh, musicians uh, financial revenue than most streaming services are. 
Um, oh, that sounds cool. I actually follow a few musicians who post their stuff on Spotify, but then leave a disclaimer um, at the end of each of their songs saying, yeah, don't listen to my stuff on streaming. Please support me on Bandcamp, and together we can help put a stop to streaming services. That would be awesome. Yeah, because like, there's so many services that just take advantage of artists, musical and otherwise. So Pretty much. Hear. Yeah, I have lost much more money than I have gained in making music. <laughs> That's yeah. That's not like not how it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, that's how it is for a lot of uh, musicians, especially in this day and age and the last mm. day and age. You just gotta. You had to get really lucky back in the day to like kind of get the spotlight, and I think it's the same way nowadays. But yeah. Uh, long story short, those are uh, other plugs you can find me on if you want to check out more of my like editing or uh, software editing work. I don't know why I said software. I'm not a programmer. It'd be cool if you were. You could make, like, sexy visual novels or something. I would... I want to make, like, a musical album about sexy gargoyles. I was about to say, like, a gargoyle dating game. Maybe that. that. Be... I mean, I, I have some experience with RPG Maker. Um, I actually tried to make my own video game when I was, like, a teenager. And I got mm. pretty far into it. But looking back on it, like all of it because i was so young at the time like it was very cringe well everything that we make at a young age and at an older age is cringe i guess that is, yeah that's simply how life is yeah i don't know um you can say what you want about you know having a very uh like 18 and up uh gargoyle oriented podcast where you just talk about how hot like all the characters are and uh, various other um, NSFW-oriented topics, but at the same time, you know, if that's if that's what's being cringes, um, then you know, yeah, sign me up. I don't want to not be cringe. Yeah, cringe is fun because these star girls are hot and they all have like muscle butts mm -hmm. and big boobas. <laughs> Should we talk about this episode? Yeah, yeah, I kind of went on a little tangent there. I apologize. Um, don't, don't ever apologize. But we're going to be covering episode twelve. We're almost out of season one. I know uh, it's wacky. This episode is titled "Her Brother's Keeper," which is, of course, so, a reference. To a the lot. Old Testament. The main theme in this episode is like sibling rivalry, and we get like several increments of that throughout the various plot lines in this yeah, episode. Yeah, so we, we did it with Elisa and her brother. We also did it with the trio because there's a we lot do. of focus on them too which i really appreciate because yeah the trio. the trio and their antics were one of my favorite things about this episode mm -hmm. oh and there's also even hyena and jackal ah uh, there's, there's three sets of siblings yeah no oh yeah i didn't even think of that wow i forgot um, i forgot about them until just now yeah it, i don't know how you could forget about them because they really take the spotlight in this episode especially I with know. their first scene like i sort of love them in this episode and that's so weird because normally both of us were talking before recording like we don't even like these characters at least we didn't like them as kids but well, now, no. like, they're so fucking entertaining in this episode. Like, I sort of love them. I think yeah. I around. Yeah, so definitely. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, it's, like, I like this episode because of how the, you know, their antics. But at the same time, I had this, like, pet peeve in the back of my mind. Because it's like, oh my god, we're seeing pack members. But, like, our two favorites are missing. I know. It's, this is, like, a really like pack heavy episode but wolf and dingo the two beefcakes neither of them are present uh they're mentioned Wolf's a couple prison. times like yeah like they get mentioned but like i we need more Wolf's need in more prison content. and dingo's apparently in europe he's in europe like what like, what is he doing there he's <laughs> Like I'm imagining, like like a teen comedy movie, like like Euro Trip or something. He's just oh getting my like God. random, like random sex and like hijinks. I think that's also like the first increment that he's not as evil as the rest of the pack are. Yeah, because the others are like committing crimes and shit. Dingo's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna spend a couple months like back tripping around France. Like I'll see you guys later. He's just having the time of his life, you know. Probably. Oh, uh, actually, he's got to make some money since he's on the run from the police. So he's probably, you know, knowing Europe, he's probably become a gigolo by now. I don't. I don't think he is on the run from the police. Oh yeah. Only only Wolf and Fox got arrested last time. Just like they were the only ones because they took hostages. 
Okay. But, like, Dingo didn't do that. He was up on the roof. Like, yeah. Like, he'd been thrown from the roof by Goliath or something. So, like... So, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. he and the twins were, like, they so weren't arrested for anything. He's he's off just, you know, probably getting, you know, a nice uh, European massage by some yeah. by some lovely he's, massage masseuse. Probably talking about how flabby he's getting. He, he can't Apo- last apologies for American the flabbiness. <laughs> I was too busy well, he's not participating. Like his rock hard six pack. He's like, yeah, I'm so flabby. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's so fucking hot. I want to sit on his face. Um, anyways, oh, I, I want to spank him. Anyway, yeah, okay. So D- we, we're, we're okay. We're thirsting over Dingo, who isn't even in this episode. Well, that's it, see, that's <laughs> that's where my pet peeve comes in, because it's like I know. we just have the fantasies. That's all we have at this that's, point. That's all we have left. It's all but Gargoyles okay, uh, fans have had since the comics. Okay, so we open up with Elisa and Derek and a helicopter overhead the city, and they seem to be tailing Xanatos. Um, right. Yeah, because apparently whenever Elisa follows Xanatos by car, like, she gets spotted. I'm going to assume it's because <laughs> Matt's probably the one driving, and Matt yeah. Houston just sucks ass, as we have previously discussed. We, so, we have. So she's gone and recruited, like, her brother, who is also a police officer, which is a detail I'd, like, completely forgotten about. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Um, but, like, so, like, they're both hanging out in this helicopter following Xanatos, who's, like, down below in a limo. And they're like, we're gonna find out what he's up to. Well, Elisa oh. is saying we're gonna, we gotta find out what he's up to. Derek is complaining the whole fucking time. Yeah, because he's like, okay, he says something like, you know, you're really obsessed with this guy. He did his time. Why not just let him be? He's a fucking like, rich Derek. He's a rich dude, Derek. He didn't uh-huh. do his time. It's that, yeah, that one, yeah, that. And but Elisa's all like, because Derek, I know he's dirty. And he's like, how? You getting spirit messages? And she's like, call it cop instinct. See, okay, what I what annoys me so much about this is that Elisa doesn't even pick out, like, these little, like, arguments and tangents with Derek. Like, she tries to tell him straight up what she, she's thinking, and he's just, like, judging her every move. Okay, yeah, like, she's telling him straight up, like, yeah, what she's thinking, but she's not providing any details or, like, backing up her uh her theories with like any evidence or anything like Derek just thinks that she's like suspects Xanatos for basically no reason and she's like no I have a reason but she doesn't give him anything to like understand that so and that's she... like the main conflict of this whole episode the thing like, is just, she's they she's keep going around and around she's putting her trust out there is the thing and he's just not taking it that's what that's what yeah. I, that's how I see it like, I feel like they have a sibling relationship where, like, Elisa just sort of... I don't... I think that Derek resents Elisa for, like, most of his childhood, it seems like. But Elisa is either, like, unaware of that or just, like, pretends she's unaware of it. Because, like, hmm. you know, she's doing her own thing. And if Derek, her little bro, has a problem with that, then that's too bad. That's his problem. So, like, I feel like Derek's just been stewing for, uh, like, many years by now over how the rest of the family sort of, like, walks over him or, like, doesn't acknowledge him properly. He's that's, gotten... That's how, that was my, I, my I mean, understanding was. That's a lot of insight to take in, um, even though there well, was... especially, n- like, like, later, like, other conversations, too. I don't Fair enough. Feeling. Okay, okay. Well, um, I personally... Well, he, he even says right here, like, when she says, call it cop instant, he's like, hey, you're not the only cop up here. And then, then he says, like, if we get a real call, like, this is over. Like, I have an actual job to be doing. Hmm. I mean, okay. So. Like, I'm not saying he's smart, or that, like, he makes intelligent choices in this episode. I like, just, he does have reasons behind the I don't, shit he does. I don't think they made these reasons obvious enough for me to, like, like find some way to like empathize and emphasize uh, blah, 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 uh with uh the way he feels i yeah, all i'm seeing right now is a guy who's clearly envious of their older sibling and take in pretty much just screws up all his own like decisions as well as his trust and pop and like you know whatever See, standings he has with his sibling based on you know sibling envy 
you yeah I, there there is some envy there and you are correct in that he has made bad choices like not even in this episode but like leading up to it um and i think the real the real fault here i'm just gonna go and say, like we're not at it yet but it's the father is like what i really think i think the only reason derek even is a cop is because the dad like 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 the dad kept saying like we're a cop family like you have to follow in my footsteps so, like derek did out of a sense of obligation I don't think he wants to be a police officer. He doesn't seem to be satisfied in it. I and agree. He's for any excuse to leave his job. Mm -hmm. Like, when Santos makes him the offer later on, Derek is, like, really fast to be like, yeah, like, I fucking hate being a cop anyway. Like, I love to be doing something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do so, kind of... I, I agree with you on that. That, you know... Like, he, he's just looking for an escape. But, like, he picks, like, the, the totally, like, worst way to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, let's... Let's, let's get there when we get there. Um, what the hell else? Okay, at, we go to the clock tower next. Um, yes. Lexington is playing this state-of-the-art-looking video game. I think it's that, an Atari? It's not, no. It's like a 3D flying sim or something. Mm -hmm. and like, I, it, okay. like, the, the I, screen makes it look like the final scene in the first Star Wars where, like, Luke is going through the Death Star. About yeah, to like, stay on target. Stay on target. Yeah, that's exactly it. it. It made me think of Star Fox, which I looked it up. So the first Star Fox game came out in 93. Hmm. Gargoyles started airing in 94. So, like, hmm. the dates would match up for, like, that, you know, like, the 3D technology on a console. I um, see. At first, I was wondering where Lex even got this game from. And, like, where do they get this gaming console? So I was like, are they just stealing shit again? But you know, it turns out, it no, turns out Elisa, Elisa gave them, gave them that. Yeah, yeah so I, like, I think it's like an actual helicopter training program. I think like that the police use. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, was... um, pretty much when we when we open up on Lexington playing this game, like Brooklyn is like complaining to him that it's his turn. And uh -huh. g meanwhile, Goliath and Hudson are watching this off to the side, and okay. they... <laughs> Goliath gives Hudson, like, the worst stink face. Like, I, stink I guy. feel like this... Yeah, stink guy. <laughs> Goliath gives Hudson, like, the worst stink guy here. It's, I, I feel like the trio have been arguing about this fucking game, like, for hours now, and he's, mm -hmm. like, ready to wring their little necks. Mm. Is what like what I got from his expression. Um, it was like this expression, like every parent of multiple ch children knows. It's like if you don't do something about your child, like I'm going to murder them. They, they both <laughs> Hudson and Goliath right now are just like exchanging like very concerned father looks. Like they they have to like make they're worried about the uh, the relationships between their children right now. Oh my god! Like it's, the fight what? seems like so like. Like, like, Sid, like, you have a brother. Have you ever gotten into a fight with him over, like, the PlayStation or the Xbox or any of that shit? Um... Because, like, it felt like, like, the fights I used to have with my brother growing up. I remember, like, when my brother was, like, eight years old and I was 16, because I'm, like, eight years older than my brother. Uh-huh. Yeah, and... so, like, the age difference is probably too much for that. No, I mean, I mean, what happened was, um, you know, he would complain saying he wanted his turn on the Xbox. Like, I know that's a meme, but that's like, that was actually my life at one point. And yeah. like, eventually he would get so relentless with like his temper tantrums that like my mother would just like yell at me to let him on. So oh I was playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> so like then like so your parents were yelling at you. I'm, 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 your, your I'm like I'm like oh you play Grand Theft Auto. I'm like oh you want him to play Grand Theft Auto? Fine, I'll let him play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and I gave him the controller and gave him my headset. I'm like yeah, go ahead, talk to these dudes. See 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 what you got to say. Obviously, I was not at my peak responsibility yet that I'm at now because I was just passive aggressively letting my brother play Grand Theft Auto at eight years old. And it's so funny. I remember the reaction actions of like the guys in like the server i was in when they just like hear this eight-year-old like try to like <laughs> talk into the microphone as uh, he's just like running around in circles i remember they were uh, laughing a lot and plus that's like on your parents be monitoring what he's playing too 
Yeah, it's weird because they were very strict with me playing video games, but less with him, I think, because they were just That's used how to it. it always is. Like, stuff that my parents wouldn't let me get away with, they let, like, my under sibling do whatever the fuck they wanted. That's yeah. That's just how it was. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Well, okay, so Brooklyn and Lex are arguing, um, and Brooklyn's like, come on, you've been on it for hours. And Lex is like, that's because I'm the only one that knows how to work it. And then Broadway comes up. He's like, why do you want to learn how to fly a helicopter? You got wings. And Lex says, oh, you wouldn't understand. And then, and then Broadway says, like, an oddly horny line where he's like, right, I'm just a big, dumb gargoyle with his brains in his stomach. I love that line because... It, re- it just made me think of, like, how I compare to, like, his early episodes as he's just the big guy who eats in the group. Um, uh-huh. And his character development, which happened, like, in the course of season one, and now here he is, it's like, he's he's kind of, like, poking fun of that yeah. perspective. Or, or, like, he's throwing that back at their faces. Like, you still think I'm this guy, but, like, I've had character growth since then, you piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but then, like, Brooklyn says something like, I couldn't have said it better. Which is like, you know what? Like, fuck off, Brooklyn. This is why Brooklyn's <laughs> my least favorite. <laughs> like, he tries to do, like, the edgy, like, final line at the end of every argument. Yeah, he's gotta be the cool guy, like, every time. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, I feel like what went unspoken here in this conversation, though, is that, like, Lex is the smallest of all the gargoyles. So, like,. I think he feels like his skills with technology are an equalizer for him. Like, it's something that he can contribute that the others, like, aren't as good at doing. Mm -hmm. So when he tells Broadway like that, he wouldn't understand. It's it's kind of because, like, he is really big and, like, doesn't know what it's like to be small and have a huge kink for small Dom big sub like Lexington does. Yeah. I also, when when he tells him you wouldn't understand, that definitely, like, still, like, the closet gay thing was, like, yeah. Yeah, like, like, that was another element, too, that I thought about. I was like, is this a gay thing? Yeah, definitely, like, Lexington is the kind of guy who wants to be understood by someone, but, like, finds he's, like, you know, he always kind of sticks out. He's he's just a cute little awkward gargoyle, dude. He's so cute. I love it. He's really good in this episode. He Lexington is top five gargoyle character fight me top five yeah I'm mean, there's only five who are the other four well I mean just the other ones in the scene right now what oh no I'm not talking about the scene right I'm talking like you know just in the whole in the s- whole show you mean okay. yeah like my like I would rank him high he's very high for Good. me he's the best mm-hmm uh Okay, so they're just bickering, but Goliath uh, kind of steps in and tries to break up the argument. Yes, he says, your warriors and rookery brothers. Elisa did not give you this game so you could fight over it like children. Like, Goliath is not in the mood right now to, like, spank all three of them. Yeah. He will do it if they push him anymore. Like, he's, he's fucking had it. Mm-hmm. And this rage makes me happy. It's, it's an interesting thing that he tries to break up this argument, because it's not, like, a huge argument, but, like, um... There's, like, bickering, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it just goes to show that, like, just Goliath pretty much desperately wants, like, you know, everything to just be in good standing. Like, he doesn't want them arguing. He just, like, wants... I I, 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 I don't know. Something about it kind of reflects the fact that, like, Goliath is still, uh, hashtag damaged. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point I hadn't considered. But, like, he's, he's so desperate to, like, get back... Like, get back some stability that, like, even small things like this sort of set him off, where he's like, mm-hmm. all three of you, like, fucking stop. Like, yeah. this isn't how you're supposed to be behaving. Like, I'm not going to, like, just let you get away with doing that. Like, up to this point, he's just been an incredibly emotionally vulnerable lead. Yeah. Um. Giant pecs. Anyways, uh, Broadway apologizes, and he mentions that he's worried about Elisa, and he jokes that if cops were meant to fly, they'd have wings, because, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we um, go back to Elisa and Derek. They're still tailing Xanatos. We actually uh, go down to Xanatos and Owen, who know that. Like, yes, she's and Owen falling. is dressed in, like, oh, this cute little yeah, like, why? outfit. 
Why would he wear anything other than what he usually wears? He's not- did he just get demoted for driver for like one oh day? God, maybe just like after Derek is hired in this episode, we don't see Owen like in the rest of it. So like maybe he's been demoted for this one episode. Maybe, I, I don't feel... know. <laughs> so, but um, of course- Xanthos Zant is in this like this really nice tuxedo. He is. Um, and he asks Owen like, are they up there? And Owen like has like this little video camera in in the front of the the car that's like that shows the helicopter. Oh my there. god! I didn't even notice that. Yeah, like he doesn't even look out the window. He has like a special camera pointed at the sky, like where he just knows the helicopter will be. Listen, so... <laughs> all according to plan. <laughs> it, yes, this is like a peak all according to plan moment. It's <laughs> like there is no way in hell that Santa could have predicted that Elisa would go to her brother. Tracked them, like, on this specific night, being that specific part of the sky. Like, all of this is nonsense. But Xantos is just somehow able to, like, predict the whole thing. Anyways. Um, he's had this plan in place for weeks now to fuck Elise's brother. And he's gonna put it into, into action now. Anyways, they pull into a nearby parking lot, which we see a sign that says that this is apparently a diamond exchange. Yeah. That he's going to, uh, be at. And we cut from there, and we immediately go to the Diamond Exchange, like the social gathering, and we see a couple of familiar faces, Hyena and Jackal. They have been elegantly dressed up for this particular occasion. They look amazing, and they're with a bunch of fancy rich people. But yeah. Like, they don't look out of place. They, they look fucking hot here. They're, they come in like they own the place. Uh, like, Hyena has this, like, lounge dress. Jackal's in a nice tux. It, Jackal has never made, like, having just this really ugly mullet look better. Yeah, somehow it works, like, only in this episode. Like, he looks yeah. good. Yeah, I okay. It's because Wolf and Dingo aren't around for us to compare him to. Yeah, no, exactly. Right? Um, I was talking to the... <laughs> I was talking to, uh, Krupa while we were watching this, and that we were taking notes. I messaged him, like, a couple screenshots of Jackal, and I'm just like, is it just me, or is, like, Jackal, like, more attractive here than any of his other episodes? Like, he looks a little muscular at some parts, too, and it's just... I, I think he's, he's been working out a little bit. He know? has, yeah. And, like I... Like, like Krupa just said, it's also because Dingo and Wolf are not here to overshadow him. Yeah, like, normally he's, like, like a point six on, like, a five-point scale for me, but, like, in this episode, he's, like, a 1.5. He's, okay. he's been promoted. So, it's interesting that you have this, like, scale to me, because <laughs> it's... I, I'm wondering what your, like, standards for, like, maximum hotness are. Um... I think I actually made an actual chart once of all the characters. Like, who was at the top spot? I think it was Lex... Lexington. Griff. Griff. Um, who, like, I know that Goliath was a four. I think Goliath and Broadway were both fours. Um, mm -hmm. I have to track down this chart again. Actually, I can't because it was on my fucking Twitter that's now been uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm sure... I'll have to remake the chart at some point. And we, that'll it. be fun. <laughs> Maybe we could do that in, like, a little, like, live stream or something that would like that. That be cool. That. Yeah, we could have, like, fans of the One Cloth Hour tune in. We could do a little Q&A and a little tier ranking of that the characters. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah dude. Plan for that. Hell yeah. I'm I'm going to put Brooklyn at, like, the bottom slot and everyone's going to be mad at me. <laughs> I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be vouching for you the entire time. Yeah, it's good. I'm valid. Okay. Um, but okay, so there's, like, there's this, like, soiree for rich people happening at this diamond exchange. Um... Jack and Hena come in. They have they've got their eye on a certain diamond that's there, the Coyote Diamond, which that, will be important going forward. But for this mm -hmm. episode, it's like just a fancy diamond. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting to note that this is a diamond that Fox tipped them off to, um, and they're like really like horny over this diamond. Like they're like leaning in close to it, and like yes, I mean, money is hot for some mm -hmm. people, and like yeah. they they like to have wealth. I think that it's it's interesting because it's like hyena. Um, this shows a few things. Hyena definitely is the kind of individual who will just fucking take whatever the hell she wants, and she'll like rip the head off of anyone who gets in her way. Uh, uh yeah, this scene shows that several times. Uh, that and she is fully willing to just like attack people. 
Yeah, she's a psychopath. And uh, Jackal's more of, like, you know, he's in it for the thrill kind of guy. He's got, like, he's definitely, like, uh, you know, you gotta, like, he's like Dennis. He, he's in from, it for, from like, It's Always Sunny. Yeah, pretty I, I much. Yeah, I feel like Jackal fancies himself, like, a manipulator mm -hmm. of some sort, which what? is funny because he's manipulated, like, this entire episode. Uh, yeah, pretty but, like... much. <laughs> he's not the but... smartest guy. But he thinks he's, like, really smart. He thinks he's hot shit. Just like Wolf thinks he's hot shit, but not in the same uh, way. Wolf does it in more of a gay way. Jackal's more of, like, a, a sociopath who will probably he probably has a collection of skin luggage. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I really like how the two of them approach this diamond, too. Like, the diamond's in this display case that, like, these other rich people are like, standing around it. And Jack and Lahina, like, walk up um, and just sort of, like, push the other people out of the way, like, mm -hmm. with their butts. Like, they just, like, bend over really uh forcefully. <laughs> and their asses, like, hit these other rich people who, like, just get, like, catapulted out of frame. It was, like, it was sort of amazing, like, how little they cared. They're just, like... I... <laughs> Look, they, they, you know, they get what they want, like I said, they, they go like for they, it. Yeah, they just, they don't give a fuck. They don't care um, if they gotta, like, you know, like, like, rub asses with a bunch of rich people. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, I'll let you, so, uh, handle how okay, they... Okay, so, Hyena's like, well, what's to stop us from just grabbing it and shooting our way free? And Jackal says, style, dear sister. Style. We need to talk about Jackal's voice this episode because it was kind of weird, like in the in the pack episode, like their debut episode. But here it's like it's like bedroom creeper levels of weird. Like, well, I, listen, he just says things in a sensual way. I feel That's like he's all. constantly <laughs> trying to like emit ASMR on everybody around him. <laughs> Like, he, I don't, like, he talks I, like he's a snake person. He does! Yeah. It. Like, he's a British snake man. He's like a <laughs> Slytherin or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's a, he's a parcel ton. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, so he says, style, and the fact that I don't want to get butt-fucked by wolf every day in prison. So please, which, which is inevitable. your bloodlust. <laughs> and then Hyena says, I should have gone to Europe with Dingo. He knew how to have fun. So, like, what is, that, what does that okay. imply? What does that imply? That implies that they fuck, <laughs> is what that implies. Dude, Dingo like, there's is... there's no other meaning. He's such a whore, dude. Like, oh my god, he... Well, I feel like Hyena is, like, she probably, like, forced herself onto him while he was drunk, and he was just, like, he didn't actually, like, consent, but he was like, uh, okay, whatever, like... <laughs> I'm horny, you'll write so, this So, it's Dingo fine. has... We, we confirmed fucked Fox, and it's implied here that he's also fucked Hyena, and, you know, if our headcanons on both these characters line up, he's also fucked Wolf. So, like... Has. Yeah, so it's like, he, he might be a bigger slut than Fox is. I mean, have you seen him? Like, oh my, he's so fucking gorgeous. He he's... can fuck whoever he wants to. Mm -hmm. I want to. Everyone wants Dingo. I want to like chew on his butt like it's a piece of yeah. candy. Yeah. Oh my god. What does it taste like? Caramel. Candy. Oh, caramel. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got candy flavored butt. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and that was very horny for me. Um. But right after that, though, Aina like digs her heel into Jackal's leg. <laughs> right. And and she like she watches him react to it and gets this really like sadistic expression on her face. Dude, she's she's a, just a straight up sadist, honestly. Yeah, like she got off on just inflicting pain on him. What was like, it in a like, public place? Like growing up with her as a sister. I feel like she tortured him regularly. Probably. And I, either he like grew to enjoy it or at least like tolerate it. like he understands this, like like who she is like right like <laughs> right now he's definitely tolerating it i'd say like he gives her a look like i know that you just enjoyed that but this is business time right now like <laughs> like i had no like this is a weird scene like to me it also implies that they're just like these two are also screwing each other 
is how I also interpret it. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of, like, he kind of like, just got off on it because of how unexpected in public that was. Yeah, like, if there's, like, they always have this weird incest vibe, these yeah, two. Yeah, like, this weird aura. Like, you two ain't banning, are you? <laughs> Um, but he's, like, he gets out this thing. I guess it's, like, to cut through the glass around this diamond. Like, he's gonna, he's gonna use it. Um, um but before you can use it, like, uh, one of the workers at the, uh, the diamond exchange, I guess one of the saleswomen or something, the diamond uh, handler. Big uh, smile on her face. Yeah, very, very big. Like, I thought she was going to come through the screen and eat me kind of big. <laughs> uh, and, like, you know, uh, the twins are pissed off. Jackal's like, excuse me, I was looking at that. And uh, she takes I'm the diamond. Sorry, but it's just been purchased. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> No, go on, because I don't have the script, so I'm I'm gonna rely on like what she, what you're saying. She says, "Yeah, she says I'm sorry, but it's just been purchased." And hyena looks like she's about to just straight up murder this woman. Yeah, and Jackal has to like grab her to like keep her from pouncing while also like still maintaining his own smile. And he asks like, "By whom, may I ask?" And the lady says, why, Mr. David Xanatos, of course. And you yeah. see Xanatos, like, on the other side of the room, surrounded by all these rich people. They're all, like, congratulating him on his purchase. And the lady comes over and, like, gives him the diamond, and he holds it up, and he's like, it should look quite nice next to the Star of Arabia. <laughs> That's, like, a little, like... Because this is all part of his plan right now, to, like, get them pissed off and stuff. Uh-huh. Which works, because I... You know, just, like, ready to murder Xanatos here. It's mm. really good. I looked up the Star of Arabia, by the way. Like, I couldn't find anything on it on Google. Um, I did find a Star of Africa, which is, like, the largest diamond in the world. So I guess this is, like, based on that, I'm assuming. There's there's a um, lot of uh, stars. I think, so, it's like, like, I think it's a fictional diamond. So like Hyena just like wants to go right in and kill Xanatos, but Jackal's just kind of like having to hold her back, and he's just like saying that they're gonna steal it from him instead. Um, yeah, they're already gonna steal the thing anyway, so now they're just like stealing it from somebody else. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately for Jackal, a couple of the guests at the Diamond Exchange recognize them. And like uh, approach hyena, uh, and they're like they tap her on the shoulder first. Like they touch her. They <laughs> they touch. And then they're her. like, "Excuse me, weren't you on that TV show, The Pack?" Like it's a fan, mm -hmm. and she gets this really like sharp smile on her face, and she says, "Why yes? Would you like an autograph?" And she like very flirtatiously pulls this man, like, by his bow tie. It looks like his wife is right next to him. By yeah, the too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then Hyena pulls out this fucking switchblade, like, out of nowhere, and she says, how about I ride it across your face? <laughs> she, and, like... She cuts his bow tie off. Fucking insane. Okay, so that's... So the scene where she cuts his bow tie off is on the version that you watched. Mm-hmm. Cause I okay, cause I looked it up on the Jarred Wiki, or at least in the article on Jarred Wiki, and it says that this episode is one of the edited ones. And they actually on Disney Plus, it said that they cut that scene out. But you watch, okay, so maybe they added it back in on Disney Plus. Yeah, cause it was definitely I watched it through Disney Plus, and okay, so you saw the the complete unedited version. He she just cut off his bow tie. I don't know why that had to be edited. Out. Yeah, I don't. I I guess it. it like, well, she, it does seem like she's gonna, like, slit his neck. I don't know why they, they cut it out. But, yeah. yeah, so, okay, if you watch this episode on Disney+, Plus, this scene is there. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so, like, people just start screaming at this, though. And Jack yeah. is like, okay, like, this is happening now. Yeah, he's just kind of, <laughs> like, smirks. He's like, well, I might as well just get in on the fun. And the next fucking thing that happens, he just, like, like he just fucking jumps up and kicks Xanatos oh in the back God. of the head. And it happens so fast in, like, a second. And Xanatos, like, flies across the room. Like, and, he's, like, like the, off the, the diamond goes. Yeah, the diamond goes flying, like, Hyena catches it. 
Like everything's amazing right now. Like, oh my god! People. They're so like they they have no idea how to like adjust to society. These are psychopaths. <gasps> this is just what they do. I like we thought that wolf was the craziest one in the pack because he was just throwing barbells like through walls and like these two weren't reacting to that. But it's because like they're as crazy as he is. They just weren't showing it at that time. But uh, now is their time to be insane. See, like, I I think there's, like, a definite, like, level of crazy, and I think this, like I said, the sanest member's obviously Dingo. It's definitely Dingo. Yes, <laughs> yeah, but then it just, like, works its way up, and I think Hyena's probably the craziest, to be quite honest. Yeah, like, I, I think she's the craziest person on the entire show. Like, she, really, yeah. like, she flips, like, on a dime, like, mm -hmm. from, like, happy to, like, like psychotic, like, I would not ever want to be in the same room as her, because she, like, might fucking kill you. She's... Or at least, like, just torture you for fun. She's definitely in that chaotic evil alignment, I would like, say. she really is. Um, but okay, so, security, like, surrounds Hyena. She's brandishing her knife at them. Like, she's just gonna have to take down these fucking guys. Uh, Jackal tells her it's time to go, and she says, I don't take orders, brother. Not even from you. It's like but. it's like she's not even giving an order. Like he's saying, we gotta get out of here. There. <laughs> and right after that, they do leave, and like she does do what he says. I don't. She she just has to be like, fuck off. I'm crazy right now. <laughs> um. So they fucking perform this like acrobatic they routine do. though, like on the way out. Like Jackal does this like this aerial summer somersault flip. In the yeah, air. and Hyena's just like flipping, like in this what the fuck dress, is going like on? across the floor. Like it's amazing. <laughs> Everyone's just staring at them. Just like, who are these people? What is happening? Oh my god! And Xanatos is just like dusting himself off, and he's like, Owen, call the police. <laughs> Because he's like, oh, I don't even want to deal with this right now. Even though he's the one who set all this up in the first place. This is like, this is like the peak, like, just of those two. Like, I don't know a scene that's as crazy as this one with them. Oh my, just like every le like, there were so many creative choices made in this scene, and like, they're all good ones. Yeah, um, I like it how made me very happy. I like how we're barely like even introduced to the diamond thing, or like we have to like kind of we're not like given any exposition of what's going on. It all just kind of like happens so fast, <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. They just flip. They cho they woke up and chose violence. Yeah. Um, so the two of them they run up the stairs like up to the roof. Um, mm -hmm. They're just like bitching at each other the whole time. Um, once they're up there, Hyena kicks like this heavy looking door completely off its hinges, like with one kick. I don't know how she does that. She has super strength now. Yeah. Um, but then they also have like hang gliders up on the roof like they've they've prepared for this heist yeah uh, they do i thought they were incredible. i thought they were like umbrellas at first the way she pulled them out but then like i was like okay for some reason my first thought was like they're okay, gonna mary poppins, gonna mary their, way poppins out of there. their way out of here <laughs> is this what's happening <laughs> but no then she like takes them apart i'm like oh okay these are hang gliders uh -huh. but before they can take off uh, a helicopter rises up and uh, of course it's Elisa and Derek. Um, so so they're like the, they're you know, stay where you are. They're shining their light on them and yep. I think the two twins trying to make like a break for it and they're doing like more crazy just like flips and stuff on the I rooftop. Know. And it's amazing. There's but then more... Jackal like hunters down and we see that he didn't just have a hang glider up there, he also stored like a bazooka. Mhm. Mm which like I guess before the police showed up, they just had this bazooka up here, and they were just gonna leave it on the roof. But I don't now. He has a bazooka. Like they had this whole like chaotic <laughs> like plot to buy the ring just... or steal the ring, and they weren't expecting for Xanatos to buy it, so they're just like fuck it. It's amazing. He he does a shoot at the helicopter, but then Xanatos comes in at the last second. He like dives in, throws off Jackal's aim, so the. Mm -hmm. The bazooka blast, like, hits the helicopter's tail end, and it starts, like, spinning around. Uh, but Derek's able to get it under control, and, like, he lands the helicopter on the roof safely. But while, the, yeah. while all that's happening, though, the twins, they, they've surrounded Xanatos, they're both holding knives. Uh, 
Jackal's like, you just made your last mistake, rich, rich man. man. I like how they both just have knives. Like, they're, they're, they don't have, like, guns or anything. They want to cut you up close. Yeah, they're, they're cutters. They're they definitely people. are. They, they, they're the type that use the knives, and they do it on mm -hmm. other people. They like to, to watch their victims squeal. They do! Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's basically, like, Dean Dennis as supervillains. <laughs> I feel like they tortured small animals a lot as children. And I think I think Jackal might have snapped the few necks of a few crows. Maybe he tried oh to do God. another one just to see how like how it feels because there's like no way it should have been that simple. And then he did another one after that. Okay. <laughs> no, because uh... that, that's what they talk about Dennis doing in the uh, one episode. Yeah, Jackal is Dennis. Pretty much. Um, but then, okay, Elisa stops them, though, like, before they can cut up Xanato. She's like, hold it, drop the knives and hit the deck. Do it now! And the two of them, like, look at each other. Like, they're like, should we actually do that? But then they just immediately turn around and they're like, no. And they just run back to their hang gliders. They had, like, they um, needed, like, a <laughs> moment to, like, do that twin telepathy thing. Of, yes. like, let's, let's book it. Uh-huh. And they're they're fucking out of there. They just they hang gliding over New York New York City now, mm -hmm. um, and they they're out of sight. So Xantos goes over like he picks the diamond back up because they left it on the roof, mm -hmm. and he says to Elisa like, "Never a gargoyle around when you need one, huh?" And Elisa it, like she looks like she's gonna just like flay him alive with her mind. Like she is so pissed off Ugh. that she just saved Xantos. She's like, "I fucking hate you. Don't talk to me." <laughs> So, like, sensing hostility, Xantos goes over to Derek then, and he holds out his hand, and he's like, I saw you land that rig without the rear rotor. Impressive. <laughs> well, how, would you like, like, how would you like to land me without my rear rotor? Oh my god! Or, like, how would you like to just, you know, use my rear rotor however you want to, big boy? Derek, like, visibly swoons at, like, the rich, hot gay man fawning mm -hmm. over him. <laughs> And he, like, tapes Xantos' hand. He's all like, oh, well, you know, didn't have a lot of choice. And then, like, Xantos puts his arm around Derek's shoulder, sort of, like, squeezes him, and he's like... Like, like a pet. Like a pet, yeah, yeah. Like a pet. Yeah. And he's like, I wonder, would you be interested in a job with my company? I need someone as a pilot and a personal bodyguard. I can guarantee that I'll be less risky than the police work, and I can probably pay better, too. Much better. And Elisa's just, like, standing there the entire time with her hands on her hips, like, looking <laughs> on disapprovingly as Xantos, like, hits on her brother. It's... And Derek's all, like, he's, like, flustered. He's just like, uh, well, that is, I, I... And Xantos is like, think about it. Nice meeting you. And he yeah, hands not... him his card. He's like, he's like, call me. Yeah! It's yeah. like, call me later. And, and, like, he just, like, leaves and... Elisa's like, ignore him, Derek. He's just using you to annoy me. Which, she's right. She is, like, he, she is right. But I think, like, Xantos has somehow, like... He must have a psychological profile on, like, all of them by now. Because mm -hmm. I think he knows how Derek would react to that. Yeah. Which Derek gets annoyed. Because he's like, because once again, Elisa's, like, sort of, like, belittling him in a way. Like... And Derek's like, actually, like, maybe he thought I was a good pilot. And maybe he thinks I'm super hot. Because I am super hot, Elisa. Maybe Xantos is into that. Maybe he wants to fuck me. Does that make you feel like, like, maybe I'm the better sibling now? He didn't even want to fuck you, did he? See, I was kind of, this, like, <laughs> watching this, me watching this, I was very pissed because, to me, it looked like Derek is considering taking the job just to spite his sister. Like, I, I think that definitely is part of it, yeah. Because he but knows that she not disapproves, just that. and he's, like, sort of into that. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's all like, but he's also being like, don't kink shame me for my gay sex with billionaires kink, sis. Stop that. I, you see, I think the thing that irks me is that Derek just met this guy... Uh, uh -huh. I, I don't he know. knows that Elisa disapproves of him and has her reasons, even if he doesn't know what they are. Ugh. But like he 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 is choosing to ignore that and be like, hey, maybe I like Xantos actually, because he 
like sees in me what I wish Elisa and my dad saw in me. The thing is, you know, it, Derek. No matter what the reason, Derek is using the perspectives people around him in his life have on him to make his decisions rather than just doing it for oh, himself. Yeah. yeah, he he feels way too much about like like he he's desperate for approval. Mm -hmm. And like, I think, yeah, that's definitely coloring his decisions and making him do. Like, it's shit. like you said, Xanatos had probably had the psychological profile, so it's like Xanatos is like, damn, all I have to do is tell this guy he's hot a lot. That's literally and... all he has to do. Uh huh. <laughs> and offer him a lot of money to like, you know, suck his dick once a day whenever Xanatos wants, and like, that's all. That's it. That's all he has got to do. And it's like, uh. it's like he. It also seems like he's spiting her because she seemed unappreciative of his assistance, even though he did nothing but complain while flying her around the city. Well, like he was, he was taking time out of his job to. Be what is he? What this. was he doing before? This? I don't. I don't know what he's. There's doing not enough. Like the what rest of the time. Was this a busy day for him? Like what? I don't. I don't know. Did he have plans? <laughs> he's just a cool pilot. He gets to fly around. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's interesting because a couple, a few episodes ago when we were talking about Derek, um, I was actually like on the vouch for him. I think you were against him. It's interesting how the tables have turned completely. Okay, I still think he's a fucking idiot, but like I thought, I, I didn't. I don't think he's. He'll be much worse once he he turns into a furry. Like oddly, like the hotter he gets, the stupider he gets too. But like in this episode, like. He is a moron, but, like, he's fine. I don't know. I still, like... I, I think it's interesting how they weren't sure what to do with Derek, so they're like, let's just turn him into, like, a big mutant furry dude with, like, a Speedo. I can't wait until we get Because it's, episode. like, looking Even at... I fucking hate it, but, like, it'll give us so much to talk about. <laughs> like, looking at him, how he turns into Talon, and looking at him now, there's, like, it's, like, night and day, almost. He's such a moron. And he's a fuckboy. Like, that's the other part of his problem. Mm -hmm. Like, he thinks with his dick a lot of the time, and right now, like, Xanatos is talking to his dick. I think the thing with you and me, Croup, is that we don't like fuckboys. <laughs> like, I, I, uh, we, they have to be a certain type of fuckboy. Yeah, like Jackal. <laughs> he's gotta be. We don't like Jackal. <laughs> yeah, we, he, he, he's entertaining. I think we're just coming around a lot of these characters now that we're giving them like more of a closer look. Um, even Brooklyn. I even I said that Brooklyn was hot in that motorcycle episode. Remember? Yeah, but he's he, not the he's hot one. Up, he's not he's the hot one in this spaces. episode, and I will. No, but like he is still sort of hot. Well, yeah. I mean, all the gargoyles <laughs> are hot. Yeah. Okay. Back at the packs, like old workout room. Yeah. Uh, and Hyena are just like hanging out. Uh, Hyena is like kickboxing. Oh, wait, but we also see a poster, and on yeah, that we poster, poster we see Wolf and Dingo. Their only okay. appearance in this episode. Here, here is your Wolf and Dingo content. There's exactly <laughs> one poster where the whole pack is there, and and they're also there, and they're looking yeah. hot. And what does the poster say? Oh, I don't remember. It says, like, they're fighting the... No, they're gonna battle the fighting ninjas or something. Even though it's the evil ninjas. Okay, this must be a separate group from the evil ninjas. There's the evil ninjas, and there's also the fighting ninjas. I really think that the the pack is secretly just a, a dance troupe, and that they just put, like, a fucking action spin on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's basically no, because I I, I, I saw like a dance uh, performance, like uh, like I forget the name of it, but I was at Bush Gardens not too long ago with my grandmother. Uh, we mm -hmm. were we were wearing masks, of course, and of course. Uh, we were um, we saw this like light show of like acrobats, and there was like a lot of their their outfits. Um, I remember they seemed very similar to the Pax outfits, but uh -huh, without the, the armor. Tarts. Yeah, leotards and, uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, and the, you know, the, the stretchy spandex stuff and stuff, and there was this one strong guy, he was, like, doing, like, a bunch of, like, um, he, he was on these two handles that were hanging him from the ceiling, he was doing, like, a bunch of flips and stuff, and it reminded me of cool. Wolf for some reason. I'm just yeah. like, oh, this is awesome. But I yeah. mean, like, 
ballet dancing and like choreographed fight routines like for like pro wrestling or something like that like i was there's watching not a ballet much difference between or you know like any sort of like dance like that yeah like they're basically the same thing like both require you to be like in incredible shape to do mm-hmm. so okay. like yeah i can see the which, similarities which wolf is uh dedicated to oh yeah he's got that the you know he's got to work out to have the tightest biggest butt possible so mm-hmm. it looks good on stage he definitely i like okay so he definitely has a I, I think he's definitely bigger than dingo but dingo's is more like shapely and perked yeah dingo's is like it's got that shape to it well wolf just has like the mass. like wolf could like the kill you. Wolf, wolf could like smother you to death with his ass mm-hmm but it's not as perky as Dingo's is. No, no. Like, uh, what Dingo can do is he could probably just, like, clench his, like, butt cheeks. And, and like, like, track a walnut between them? Yeah, pretty much. Hot. And, like, all Wolf has to do is sit on the walnut. It just, like, breaks. Mmm. Well, he has to, like, throw his, like, full weight of his ass on the walnut. And, like, it's, like, pulverized dust. Um, I think Jackal's definitely, like, the smallest out of them, though, like. <laughs> anyway, now that we've yeah, compared let's... the pack's butts and their penises, uh, <laughs> what the fuck, okay, what's happening in this scene? Okay, we so see... they're in the gym, um, yeah, right, okay, out, okay, but Jackal's see... on the phone. Jackal, um, says to Hyena that they have new orders from Fox, but by, but Hyena doesn't even want to hear it, because she's She doesn't like, fucking give a shit. She's like, I don't care. She's, like, punching this punching bag, and she's, like, uh, all angry and everything. Uh-huh. But Jackal says with a smirk on his face, oh, yes, you do. She says we get to waste Xanatos for interfering. And, uh... like... Like, she does a really creepy, like, uh, like, evil laugh when she hears she, this news. She starts cackling like a witch. She I, does. I love it so much. She's, like, just so into the thought of, like, just, like, killing people. Yeah, she's, like, she, she, she's, she's, she's crazy. Love it. She's wacky. Uh, back at the clock tower, we actually get this really gorgeous shot of Elisa oh, yeah. standing. She's, like, in the middle of the floor. And all around her is the shadow of the clock face Mm -hmm. um, that's, like, coming in from the outside. And then, like, in a circle around her at different points of the clock are all the different gargoyles. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, like, if this shot, like, signifies anything, but it's really nice looking. So I just just liked it. Um, But she's freaking out because her brother is actually going to work for Xanatos, sucking his dick, like, every single day. And she can't tell Derek about the gargoyles to warn him that Xanatos is bad. Because, mm-hmm. like, it's not her secret to tell. So then, like, all of them sort of have a discussion about, like, whether it's okay to out them to Derek or not. And they sort of agree that, like, actually, like, she can do it if she wants to. Like, Broadway thinks that Derek should just trust Elisa on faith. But Brooklyn's like, well, well you know, that's hard to do if she's not giving him, like, anything to like, yeah. back up what she's saying. Um, and Lex just, like, doesn't give a fuck. Like, he just wants to go out and kill Hyena and Jackal, but they all sort of ignore him for that. Um, well, I don't know if he lot... wants to kill them, but, like, he definitely wants he revenge. He wants to bring them to justice. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. wants revenge. Because he still fucking hates the pack. Because he outed himself to them thinking he'd get five boy and girlfriends, and they all turned on him and betrayed him, and it sucked, and he fucking hates them now. Mm-hmm. Um, Goliath tells Elisa just that do... she should just definitely just tell Derek about just, all of them. Goliath like, says to do whatever's necessary to make him believe yeah. her. Like, he even says so, that, like, okay. just bring him to us, and, like, we'll show ourselves to him. So, like, we, we're fine Interesting thing that really, really bothered me this entire episode... Everybody is telling Elisa to uh, talk to Derek, but every time Elisa tries to do this, Derek immediately starts with his bullshit and doesn't even he, let her. He shuts her, her down like every yeah. time. It's yeah. so annoying. And it's uh, like I think what also makes it more difficult. Like everyone's telling Elisa that it's okay to out the gargoyles, Derek. I don't think she wants to do that, though. No. Like, not because, like, on one level, I don't think she fully trusts Derek's judgment. And on the other level, I think she also enjoys, like, 
being the only human who the gargoyles like know. I think she likes having them to herself, sort of. Maybe, yeah. I mean, so, like, like, I think there's like a couple different things happening. I wonder like, if like her, her feelings toward Goliath that she developed apparently when she first heard his voice have anything to do with this. Pro yeah, probably. I mean, you know, right now. She doesn't have any, like, competition, so to speak, like, for his attention, or for, like, any of their attentions. I am so, living... Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm living for the psychological read we have on these characters right now. Like, this is, like, a favorite thing of mine to do. It's just, like, uh -huh. psychoanalyze fictional characters. And, like, yeah, luckily these are good characters, so they actually don't yeah. do have meat to them that you can, like... Yeah. You know, compose such thoughts about these people. Yeah, no, that's why I like Gargoyle so much, because it's like, not yeah. only is it a show that um, has so many hot, like, toony characters, but <laughs> also has really good writing and characters that I enjoy. Yeah, the, the pecs reel you in, but then the story keeps you hooked. Yes, eh? yes, exactly. That's, that should be, like, the... If they ever do, like, a return with Gargoyles, that should be their, like, little signature they have on their poster. <laughs> and the poster's just, like, a close-up of Goliath's pecs, and this time oh they've updated the animation, so he has nip-nops now. Oh my- oh no, I can't- I can't deal with Goliath having nipples, that would be too much. Oh hot. my I, god, I don't even want to go there. Dude. No, dude. it would be too much. Too dude. hot. Dude. It would- oh my god. Uh, okay, um... The Art next scene are any is, artists um, that are listening uh, draw nipples onto Goliath, please? <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you. Go on. So Elisa goes to Derek at the station, like, she finds him in an empty room somewhere, and she is gonna tell him about the gargoyles, but before she can, like you were just saying, Sid, Derek just shuts her down. He says he's gonna tape Santos's offer. And in fact, he's already sucked Santos's dick like three separate times on the way to work that day. Elisa's all shocked. Uh, commercial break happens. Yeah, it, it just like cuts away. I don't even know how mm -hmm. that exchange like ends, because the next thing well, we see... They probably just had a fucking fight. Oh, yeah, because next thing we see is Elisa talking to her dad. They're like at, in like, some bar. Hall. Yeah, it's a really nice looking bar. Actually. It is very like you know, it's like this is like a retired like cops kind of like bar. Like this is just yeah, where they I, hang I think out. That, that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, uh, this is such a good episode yeah. for Elisa's family too, because we get to actually like linger with all of them for a little while. Yeah. Like, we, we saw them in the in the episode where Lisa got shot, but like we only saw them for a little while. Yeah. Her dad, by the way, I've mentioned this before, yes. he's voiced by Michael Horse, who also mm -hmm. plays Hawk on Twin Peaks. We're a big fan of this actor. I love Twin Peaks, and Hawk is a great character. He, yeah, he's good. I, he's good in like every role he's been in, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, so, okay, um... So her dad is all, like, commiserating with her. He's all like, I hate to see it happen. Derek's a good cop. And Elisa's is like, he? I've got to make him see that Xantos is bad news. Whatever he's got planned for Derek, I know it isn't good. So, like, the and dads try to come up for different ways for Elisa to convince him to stay on the force. And, um, I'm sorry, did I just cut you off? Were you about to say No, something? you know, you're good. And, uh, he comes up with a proposition that, like, um to okay hold on, hold on uh she said su he suggests to tell him that it'll kill their mother if he quits the family business uh -huh. and the next thing we cut to like, is the mother jump cut like smash <laughs> jump cut the litter is literally supporting her his his, his decision i forgot how to talk okay, i mean the scene with the mom is so sweet though because she's like she's totally supportive of him like she's happy for him because i think i think he he must like uh like follow in his mom's footsteps more than his dad's like yeah. i feel like elisa is like the daddy's girl and he's the mama's boy because like I, I feel i just feel like from this conversation like he's confided in her more that like he's not really happy as a police officer hmm and and like so she knows that like he doesn't really enjoy being in this, in this field he's in so she's like really glad that he's found something that might be more fulfilling for him and she's like yeah like go for it it's really sweet. Um, hmm. I, and there's also, she, she has this really nice line. She says, honey, it's your life. Elisa and dad aren't in charge of it. You are. Which is like, aw. Like, I sort of love their mom. 
Yeah. And this would be great, like, this would be great advice if only Xanatos wasn't actually planning something nefarious with him. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh. So, it's like, it's interesting, because, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna leave my thoughts to myself, but I just think it's interesting how, uh, you say, uh, Elisa follows after her father, who is, like, this kind of, like, reserved but lawful man who kind of, um, does whatever he thinks is best for the family, which mm. kind of reminds me of someone else who does whatever he can for his family and is also very, um, upholding of justice amongst other things. Uh, which, you know, leads who are, me... Who are you talking about? What? Goliath. Oh. So, oh my god, do you think she sees her dad in Goliath? No, that? but that that, com- <laughs> that comparison with Elise's dad and Goliath, I think I might be getting a bit too Freudian into this. But, Maybe, like, but I, I like it, though. Yeah, I, I, like think, I think there's definitely an explainable complex, and that shows why Elisa is so attracted to Goliath well, in I mean, the first place. I think place. she has a type, and I'm sure she admires her father. So, like, seeing some of her father's qualities in Goliath, I'm sure that's not, like... A no, negative in her no. Life. It's I'm not saying it's a negative at all. Um, but you know, the, sometimes these kind of comparisons can be like like read into like n- like I don't know. There's a lot of uh, psychological theorists out there that try to suggest that um, people kind of gravitate toward the energy their parents have. Um, uh, which I hope not. Which is <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but like. That's... Just thinking about my parents, I'm like, uh... okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up. We're getting a little too real here. We're getting a little too real. But yeah, I just thought that comparison was interesting. Let's, let's keep going. The next I scene think, is. I think they... another. Well, just one more thing before we move on. I think another part of the Derek and his mom uh, relationship. I think uh, she knows that Derek's also a very passive person. Like mm-hmm. he became a police officer more to please his dad than because, like, he wanted to be one. So I think she's also just glad that he's, like, doing anything, like, on his own. Like, he's being proactive for once. So Mm -hmm. she just wants to, like, encourage that in him as well. Yeah. Yeah, I I just got into that because um, it was probably the most personalized we'd seen, like, um, Elisa and her brother with their parents, and it shows... Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting way of, like, showing where things come from, and I read into it to a a weird extent, but an interesting one nonetheless. You know, there are no readings that are not without merits. Yeah, that's true. So, hey. um, you want to dive? This is our favorite scene. You want to dive into the next scene? Okay. Uh, cut to the next day. The men's locker room at the police station. Uh, <laughs> we see a whole bunch of guys in their underwear here, or like changing out of their clothes, mm-hmm. uh, including Officer Morden Morden, who's wearing who's, nothing but a yellow he's, towel. He's only got a towel on. Uh, we also see, like, an older guy. He's in his underwear. And uh, he has, like, one guy buttoning t-shirt. up his shirt and, like, showing mm-hmm. some chest. We see a blonde guy with bare feet. No. his socks on. No. I mentioned the sock guy just for you, Sid. No, I don't like that guy. <laughs> he's kind of the least hottest out of everybody we see <laughs> and, in there. And, and Derek's there, too, but he's fully dressed. At least the... I would like... I would I know, yeah. Derek, 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 is, Derek is actually pretty hot. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> Uh, Elisa busts in. She just shouts, close your eyes, boys. I got business in here. Yes! <laughs> so she walks in, like, giving no shits. Um, you see a bunch more guys on the way. Uh, and there's one who, like, runs away from her. He's only wearing a towel, too. Um, they're, they're all, all the men are just, like, covering themselves up and, like, trying yeah, to they're hide. Like, oh, they're, oh, woman. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Try to hide their naked bodies from Elisa. Uh-huh. And you okay? The one who's wearing the least amount of clothes, though, is Matt Bluestone, who's also there. Oh my god! He's, all he's wearing are these cute little like powder blue briefs, I, and I, nothing else. Powder blue? I thought they were whitey tidies. Well, yeah, they're well, they're not white. They're blue, but they I'm are looking briefs. at that frame again. Now, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me let it. me look for it in my Telegram <laughs> messages r- real quick. Yeah, I'm, we were sending them back and forth to each other. We usually do. Okay. Yeah, I guess they are blue, but, like, yeah, I guess they're blue. 
And at first, I wasn't even sure it was him. Yeah, I wasn't if you, either. If you look in his locker, though, you see the white coat that he's always wearing. See, like, like I was like... Because Matt Bluestone himself has, like, no distinguishing characteristics. Like I that. was, like, taking screenshots of that dude because it's, like, the first time we've seen, like, a half-naked human dude in the show. And, I'm, and then it's like, you sent me that one. And I, you were like, the coat is familiar. I'm like, please don't tell me that I was checking out Matt Bluestone's body oh from behind. How does that make you feel that you were like sort of into Matt Bluestone, if even fleetingly? Like a whore. <laughs> I mean, he's got a nice butt in this, you know, this part. He's yeah. like, he might have an extremely yeah. boring personality, but he's got, his body isn't half bad He looking. needs to, like, put a bag over his head so I don't have to see, like, his blandness, and then... Okay, he'd be, like, ten times hotter if he just had some sort of mask on. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I think that masked men are hot. Yeah, um, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, Officer Morgan, who, by the way, I would say he's the hottest person in this locker room. Oh, yeah. But he's all like, hey, detective, how about some privacy? But she, like, brushes past him. I like how he's not fuck. even, like, rude about it. He's just, like, embarrassed. He's, like... No, he's just, like, like lady, like... <laughs> we're all naked in here. We're all guys. Okay, I was uh, doing... Lisa's, like... I was doing my hmm? text-to-speech while doing notes, and... Um, What's it say? Okay, so I'm talking about uh, the scene with uh, Derek and his mom. I'm like, like, okay, this inspirational music plays as she just b blindly supports this decision. Oh my god, we're in a locker room in the police station. There are so many naked men. Oh, this is happening so fast. I need to describe every single one of these people. And then I took a bunch of notes. There's so many. Yeah, it's definitely a standout scene in this episode, especially for us. I was excited for it. Mm -hmm. But, like, Elisa doesn't care at all, because by no. this point, she's seen the live stick. Oh my so, gosh, like, she hangs out with all these... These human dicks hold no... They hold no power over her anymore. This is nothing compared to <laughs> Goliath's 13-inch <th> <laughs> python. Oh my god. That barely fits under his loincloth. Uh, every time there's even the slightest breeze. Everybody's yeah. seeing it. Any... Okay. Uh, so Derek's here. He's actually, like, cleaning out his locker... Uh, Elisa walks up to him, and she's all like, I can prove it to you that Xantos is a bad guy. Um, but he's, again, he shuts her the fuck down. Yeah, it's so he annoying. uh-uh, I've no doubt you can find a snitch who'll tell me that Xantos is a prince of darkness. And she says, he practically is, which I, I have always thought is a funny line. Yeah, that is. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you but he, the, Derek also, he does raise a good point here. He's like, Xantos saved both their lives the other night from that fucking bazooka. He deserves a chance to prove himself, and I deserve a chance to do what I want with my life. I can just so imagine like, Xanatos, like, if he heard any of this, he'd just be, like, jerking off. He would be, like, knowing that he, like, He's probably this to in happen. one of the lockers, and he's just, watching yeah, this exchange. There. He's like, ooh, he's, she called me like, the Prince of he's Darkness. He's hiding, he's taking pictures of Officer Morton Morgan in the showers. He's listening to this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Xanatos does. <laughs> See, this is just the daily life of rich people. It's like he says later in the episode, his life's never dull. Yeah, he's you know he can just be a horny man whenever he wants to. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, so Derek does like annoy me in this particular scene because this is like the third time I think that he's refused to listen to what Lisa has I to say. I know like, it. Like I can understand up to a point why he's behaving like this like he wants to strike out on his own he wants to be more independent mm -hmm. he wants to do his own thing like be out of the shadow of his father all this stuff but like if one of my siblings came to me and told me they had like evidence that someone i was doing business with or working with like was up to something sketchy like i'd at least hear them out over it you know but derek won't even do that much what if one of your siblings came to you and told you that I was the Prince of Darkness you needed to, like, watch out for? Well, I would ask for evidence. <laughs> and listen, oh, I would, okay, I would okay. hear them out and then form my own opinion. Okay, and same if you brought me evidence that one of my siblings was up to no good. I'd look at what you had, you know? I am evidence-based reasoning. <laughs> you sounded so efficient just now. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, um, okay, so then Alisa leaves. We see, like, one more shot of, like, men Matt, changing. Yeah, there's Matt, Matt's looking good in, like, a tank top as she's going out. I, like, he's put some clothes on. He he has big shoulders and he has bare feet. And this makes me feel <laughs> like I, I'm so uncomfortable. Oh, okay, I didn't notice these bare feet. I'm glad that you were here the, to look Matt at Matt Bluestone is going to have his own wiki feet. <laughs> He probably is already on there. Probably. As well as that nameless other police officer, and that one Viking from, like, the first episode. There used to be, like, a Wikipedia that was operated based around, like, bare feet in various, like, shows. I know. <laughs> it's, wasn't it, it called WikiFeet? That's it, what we were I, just talking about. I think... I, I, I might be, I don't know, because... I think I they, all the gargoyles are on it, because they never wear shoes. See, they okay, I, I went onto that website and it got, it was like really weird, like really weird, like not hot guys, <laughs> just like various like weird characters you'd never like, you'd never think was like hot. The important thing is that their feet are out, okay? I know how these, these fetishes work, it doesn't matter if the person's hot after a while, you just, you just need those feet. Look, I- It's from... like J. Jonah Jameson being like, get me pictures of feet! Any feet will do! <laughs> Um, I think with me, it really just kind of, like, depends. <laughs> yeah, everyone's kinks, uh, are different. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, um, so that, that wonderful scene is over. We don't get any more naked men for a while, at least. What are you talking about? The gargoyle? This, this is gargoyles. Oh, yeah, we go right back to the gargoyles, actually, who are, like, always mostly the naked. Goliath so. orders the trio to station at the slash and watch out for trouble and urges that they try to get along because of how argumentative they've been lately. Uh, uh, yeah, they've been little bitches lately. And yeah, and they, had it up to here. Of course, of course they don't listen to that, and when we cut to them like, on as watch... as soon as they're alone, I think they start fighting again. Like, Le Lexington is on his period today. Lexington he's is... he's just starting into fights with everybody. Lexington is giving initiative because he hates Jackal and Hyena and thinks they need to be caught, and Broadway's trying to tell him to give it a rest because it's more important that they help Elisa. Yeah, because and... Broadway is, like, all about protecting Elisa, so, like, that's his primary uh -huh. focus. Uh, Lexington is kind of blind blindsided by his own bias against the pack, so I kind of seen t mm -hmm. where Broadway's coming from here. But anyways, yeah. Lex, but Lex is all like, you wouldn't know what's important if it bit you on the dick. Wait, and then Brooklyn's all like, knock it off, you two. Before he could finish his sentence and talk about Broadway's oh. giant ass. I, I finished it for him. You wouldn't know what's important if it bit you on your giant big blue bear butt. He was probably going to say giant big blue bear butt that's like g yeah that was some good alliteration it's like three yeah. or four b's <laughs> a lot of b's um yeah there's a lot of b's in this scene anyways yeah. in the middle they're arguing uh they notice a helicopter which seems to have the pack logo slapped right on the side. Okay. Well, first they see a helicopter leave Castle Wyvern, okay. which has Derek and Xanatos in it. Gotta get into the specifics. And then, Well, no, just because in a second later they see the pack helicopter following that other helicopter. So it, that's how they know that it's Derek just and like, Xanatos it's are It's interesting in that as they're arguing about it, it literally just like shows up like in the nearby city <laughs> skies. Like the, and like... It seems that the the twins are having their own little helicopter dogfight over the city and are, like, shooting at uh, Xanatos and Derek's copter. This part is insane. Just, like, how many people did they kill in the surrounding buildings of, like, all the times they miss Derek and Xanatos? Like, those bullets are going somewhere. Yeah, no, we do, see, we do see some bullets go through some windows and people getting out of the way at some point. Yeah, but, like, oh my god. This is, like... I don't know if this scene would have been able to air, like, after 9-11. I love how this is the kind of show that just has, you know, portrays the rich supervillains. They just kind of have casual dogfights over the city once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just what you... Like, let, let, Lex Luthor has done this a thousand times by now. So, Hyena, being the psychopath um, she is, launches... She's just laughing maniacally. She launches a missile <laughs> at Xanatos' helicopter. Derek manages to maneuver out of the way. They do a bunch of 360 spins, and Derek tries to get the copter under control, while Xanatos seems to reach in the backseat for his own little laser gun and shoots at the uh -huh. helicopter behind him. Um, but it just bounces off their, like, yeah. laser-proof armor or something. And then you know, Jackal says, like, 
Rich man. Dead, Dead man. man. So, why does the pack have their own helicopter? Why? I don't know where they got where, this helicopter where, why? from. Why? <laughs> Did they use it on um, the show? Like, maybe it was used in the show, but, like, why is it equipped with, like, actual live yeah. ordinance? Yeah, well, I mean, Xanatos funded the show, so it's probably a... It's probably his oh, fucking yeah. material! It probably is. Like, Xanatos probably arranged for them to God. have a helicopter so that they could attack him with it. Because this is all part of his master plan. So, before Jackal can shoot um, at the helicopter, Broadway jumps on top of their copter before they can do this. And, interestingly enough, um, Broadway, like, breaks open the window uh, next to Hyena and the copter. The captions on Disney Plus say that he says boo after he does this, but <laughs> all I hear from him is, like, a yell. Just kind of like a little, ah! Yeah, like, you, like an you angry... showed me that caption before I actually got to that part of the episode. When I got to it, I was like, I didn't hear him say boo. Like, when did he say that? Maybe, I, I don't know, does the script Dis say? I think Disney's captions are just wrong. What does the script um, say? Oh, let me go and look. I think I still have it open. It is in the script, yes. Okay, that's so probably I why. Guess, I don't know. So that's interesting. Yeah, I guess. Um, so he does that, and then he just fucking yeets hyena out of the fucking helicopter. Like he just picks and her I, up. I don't think he knows that she has a parachute. I think he's just like, "How about you just die?" Because <laughs> <laughs> um, you only see her open it at like the last second she's in view. Like you see her parachute come out, so like she's not fucking dead. And Jackal's just left piloting the helicopter. Um, and mm -hmm. Derek points yeah. out to Xanatos that something is attacking them, and Xanatos just says, let's take advantage of it and get out of here. Uh, yeah. Jackal tries to pull a pistol on Broadway before Lexington gets him out of the copter as well. Uh, there's mm. one- Yeah, it was like, they all come out and help, it's really cute. Like, the three of them, like, collectively throw yeah. Jackal out of the fucking helicopter. Yeah. And then, next thing you know, uh, they're trying to stop the helicopter from crashing. Um, uh -huh. Lexington is in the pilot seat trying to fly it, and with the little joystick- yeah, he, he's been- he's been training for this moment. Yes, yes. And Brooklyn and Broadway are like, are you sure you're able to do this? And Lex is like, oh, yeah, definitely. It's just like the simulator game back at the tower, he says, and Brooklyn mm -hmm. just responds with famous last words. Yeah, but, like, the first thing Lex does, though, he, like, aims the helicopter straight down at the ground. <laughs> Like, he's flying it straight down. Um, yeah, they... And Broadway, Broadway's trying to give him advice. He's like, feel the air currents. Like, with use your them. wings. Just like you do with your wings. And, Bro and Brooklyn's like, yeah, use the force, Lex. God. Like, he's so sarcastic. He's so sassy. I love it. I also like that they've, like, they've all watched Star Wars by now. Yes, I do like that. Um, so, they fly dangerously close to some of the traffic. <laughs> Uh, we see a few funny shots of that, but then they s somehow manage to bouncingly and very rustily land in, like, a nearby street or alleyway. I, it, it looks like an alley, but, like, it's an extremely it looks wide like, alley. See, see this is what I thought like. about the alley in the pack episode. When you told me it was a street, I'm like, I thought it was just a really wide alley. I, I think they just have really wide alleys in this show for some reason. Uh, this sequence was really well animated, too, So, the anyways, coming down. Like, it looked really good. Um, Broadway lands on top of Brooklyn, um, upon landing, and... Like, his entire body like his is entire, over top of Brooklyn. He's, his whole ass is just, like, on Brooklyn's, like, covering up Brooklyn. And Brooklyn's yeah, like, just, like, smooth. Mm -hmm. Real smooth. Yeah, talking about his butt, probably. And then Lexington crawls out of the copter. He's just like, hey, any land you can walk away from. <laughs> Which is true. Uh, um, so that, they're all like sort of looking at this busted helicopter, and Brooklyn's like, well, what do we do with it now? Use it for a planter? They decide to hide it somewhere before the sun rises. Where the fuck are they going to hide a helicopter in New York City? You know, like, all according to plan. I, I can't with this. Like, do they throw a tarp over it? Like, what do they even... Did no one report that a they, helicopter came down? They probably just down? threw, like, a little blankie over it. Like, a no hundred people difference. saw it. It bounced down, like, three alleyways. <laughs> yeah, they, they hide it somewhere. And like, uh. Okay, so, um, Lexington also suggests that he might be able to get it running again. 
Um, yeah, by, by tomorrow night, which is insane, too. That, we okay, transition as the camera zooms in on Lexington's chest for some reason, and now we're back at the... <laughs> we're Now we're back at the tower where the trio are discussing the copter. Uh, Lexington is, uh, like, oddly muscular, too, in this episode. Like, he he's is. He's looking good. Lexington he is chest. hot, dude. Like, he, I mean, he, he's always hot, but he looks, like, even hotter than I need to see, does. like, Lexington in some sunglasses, just like Brooklyn had. Oh. And... Like sunglasses and like a spiked collar, spiked wristbands. Yeah, um, yeah. Like if, if Lexington tattoos. were the one to to dress up the way Brooklyn did in that one episode, well, I don't even know why yeah. Brooklyn was the one to ride the chopper. He didn't even fix it up. It was Lexington. Y'all were thirsting over the wrong gargoyle. I know Lexington was like so much hotter. <sighs> Ugh. Anyways, okay. <laughs> um, Brooklyn and Broadway are like crossing their arms, staring down at him, like asking, "Why would you want to fix it up when you can already fly?" Um, but you know, uh, okay, least... I feel like that line though, where, where they ask, "What do we need with the helicopter?" is like the writers using the characters just talk like directly to their marketing team. Yeah, because the only reason there even is this all this helicopter nonsense in this episode is because the um. They wanted to make the toy of one, but then they don't even ever end up making that toy helicopter. So, like, it's in this episode for not even a reason. Um, but yeah. <sighs> Anyways, um, <laughs> while they're while they're uh, scolding Lexington, Elisa off to the side suggests it might be useful for tailing Xanatos, and Goliath immediately instructs them to get the helicopter working, which Lexington is yeah. particularly happy to hear and turns down the smug mode, and he's just like, "Don't worry, guys, I'll tell you what has to be done." And Brooklyn he is so feeling his oats <laughs> in this episode. Yeah, like, he is. He's really enjoying being able to boss like the bigger boys around. Yeah, and know? he's like guiding them over. And Brooklyn's like, "Yeah, and you and what Starfleet?" He's so snide. But you know, this is also confirmation that they've also seen Star Trek. Yeah, so oh, I'm fair like, enough. That makes me happy. I I feel like Brooklyn would be like an original series fan. While Lex would be into more into TNG, then they have like nerd fights over it. I'm guessing this you prefer my, you prefer ne- you prefer TNG, don't you? Uh, I prefer Deep Space Nine actually, which would be Hudson's favorite show. I've worked out what all their favorite Star Trek shows are. Of course you have. I've never seen like the Star Trek. Why do I like Voyager? Because he has terrible taste. What? <laughs> Does he? <laughs> Uh, anyways. Well, Voyager has Neelix in it, who's, like, a cook and, like, a chef, so, like, Broadway would be into that. So, just, like, the there's scenes. this nice little shot I took note on where Hudson puts his hand on Goliath's shoulder, and the three of them with, uh, Elisa kind of, like, have this, like, nice little heroic pose moment. Uh, I think, well, I think they're smirking over the boys, like, fighting more. They're like, those guys, they're bickering. Yeah. I also like any scene that Hudson's included in because he's not in this episode a lot. Yeah, this was the scene where I realized that Hudson has literally no lines in this entire episode. I think they just didn't have his voice actor come on. Same with, so this is, I, I feel this like... This is all that he does. He touches Goliath one time, that's like the extent of his entire I, would, I feel like the same thing happened with maybe uh, Dingo and Wolf's voice actors. I feel like we could have maybe got and like some exposition scene showing where they are, at least where Wolf is. Like I would have loved just a view of Dingo on vacation in yeah. Europe. That would have been amazing. Like on a beach he, somewhere. He's on a speedo. On yeah. a beach. On a, mm, and... Or it's or it's like the nude beach. Because it's in Europe. Mm, I don't know. I'm just attracted to any hot guy in a speedo. You you're just into speedos. I really am, honestly. Like I don't know what it is about them. I see the bulge and I wanna headbutt it. I wanna like you know, put it, you know, do things with it. Okay, but imagine Dingo, like, naked sunbathing. I prefer the Speedo. He's got, to av- he's got to avoid those tan lines. I prefer the Speedo. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 Dingo's, Dingo's a Speedo guy. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. okay, like, why? If, if it's not a nude beach, he he would wear a speedo. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Style. Let me correct that. Dingo, you know, he he prefers, you know, just swimming nude. Even though he's probably, I don't know. And I, I feel like he'd be somewhat modest about, you know, certain stuff. But yeah, I agree with what you're saying. But Wolf, what? Okay, Wolf would be a speedo guy, wouldn't he? 
Yeah. Oh, wait, that's confirmed. Probably. That's confirmed he is. Because look at his outfit later in the series. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, that's basically what he already wears. Just uh, all the time. Oh, God. I know you hate, like, the fact that it's, like, a leotard. But, like, I don't know. It's just, I love looking at his lower half and seeing, like, his bare okay. legs. Now I'm imagining, like, what if Wolf went to the beach, but he wore, like, one of those old-timey bathing suits. Where, God. like, it covers, like, his whole body. And, like, that's what he wore. And Dingdo is, like, in this, like, the skimpiest speedo possible. And he's just like, Wolf, what are you wearing? <laughs> he's uncomfortable with his body. Uh, yeah. That's what he says. <laughs> um, oh, God, I miss those two guys. I can't wait till they're back in the show. We're all, there's only two more episodes, I think. Right? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll oh, the my best God. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so. Af after this, Elisa and Goliath, they sort of like reiterate their prior discussion where Goliath yeah. are like, you should just tell Derek. He, about she's been us. trying this whole episode. And this whole problem would just be solved. And she's Elisa's been like, trying. Uh, yeah, like on the one hand, she has been trying, but also she doesn't think it will be enough. Like, she, she needs like more direct evidence that Xantos is like so, definitely doing so bad what things. she does and I love this next scene like this is a good scene like we um oh, there's also a really nice shot of how yellow the clock tower is it's very aesthetic and neon looking with like a bit of steampunk aesthetic I don't know I just mm. took those notes because I like the way it looked uh, anyways, yeah, it's, it's a good looking I like though. I like bright colors and shiny things um so as uh as she says that, uh, literally the next scene, she... Oh, sorry. Um, let me restart that. It's literally the next deep. scene, uh, she is visiting someone in prison, and she Ooh, seems to be... Who is it? She seems to be talking with Fox. Fox! Yes. Oh I, I forgot that Fox was in this episode. Um, no, this yeah. This is another, like, highlight for me. Um... So, I love her visiting Fox because it reveals so much about her, like, inhibitions from when we first saw her beneath the surface. Fox seems like she's, like, in her element here. Like, I feel like she's topping every other single, like, female convict here. Like, half the prison guards. Like, she is... She's having the time of her life in prison. Like, she, this is her domain now. Yes. That Lisa is, like, entering. This is also a good, like foreshadowing of like um her future relationship with xanatos because of how similar uh, their personalities are like like she all but admits that she and xanatos are like having a thing here yeah right? like you don't, I, you don't I, fully get it I, until later like i don't know from here if they're having a thing but like i think they are, are they're definitely already working together and she's loving every minute of it like she's simping uh, for him like like so, hardcore so, well, so let me say what she says about the pack first. She says, David told me you'd come. She refers to Xantos by his first name, too, which is mm -hmm. another clue. Mm -hmm. He created the pack, you know. Got us together. Me, Wolf, Hyena, Jackal, Dingo. Put us on the air and made us stars. And I fucked them like, all. Except you know, and, and I fucked them all. Except that Wolf. Great. Except Wolf. Like every other line, she's also like like flourishing her hair. And like, like she's just like, ah, oh, she's so glad to be talking about David Xanatos. I love how someone. expressive she is. She's like, she's been itching to tell someone all her feelings. Probably, yeah. yeah. So then Elisa's all like, well, then why are Jacqueline and Hyena trying to kill him? And Fox says, they don't know he's the boss. Only I do. David told me to have them hit the diamond exchange and then make himself the next target. He set up his own assassination attempt. And Elisa's like, but why? He wants your brother. And what David Xanatos wants, he gets. <laughs> so, like, Xanatos just wants to fuck Derek. He's, this whole episode is about, like, him cuckolding Elisa, basically. Mm -hmm. And be like, oh, you don't want me to fuck your brother? Too and bad, because I'm just going to, and there's nothing you can do about it. And Fox is just in prison. She's probably yeah, and just Fox masturbating is, like, also to turned the whole on thing. By, like, yeah, she's turned on by the guy she loves, like, fucking another man, 
making himself like the top dog. She's like, oh, that's so hot. I always wondered, How like, you fuck other men. <laughs> I know the show wouldn't be the same, but like, I always wonder, like, what an HBO variant of like Gargoyles would be like. How like fucking oh sexual it would be. It would, there would be I, so much. I could imagine. I could envision like a scene of just like Fox just like resting all nice and neat in her prison cell, and she's got like maybe like a picture of David Xanatos somewhere, uh -huh. and she's and she like, just, like starts fingering herself. Yeah, Yes, absolutely, and she's like, mm -hmm. she's like giggling to herself in her prison cell, and the other prisoners are probably just like, "What the fuck's going on? Like, what is with this bitch?" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I picture it. I love Fox. She's a great character. Fox is incredible. So okay, Elise is like, "So why are you telling me all of this?" And then she's like, "Oh, because he left you to rot in jail." Like she thinks that this is Fox like betraying her boss to her. Mm -hmm. But Fox is like, you haven't got a clue. You're so, you're so far behind him, it's pathetic. He told me to tell you. He doesn't have to hide his plans from you. There's not a thing you can do to stop him. He's the most brilliant man on the face of the earth. And there, there's this, like, light shining down on her as she says that. And, like, you can hear, like, this heavenly choir start playing. Like... <laughs> She's so into fucking Xanatos. Dude. It's, like, mind-blowing. Dude. She... Oh, my God. She loves smart, powerful men. She, she does. She's also a smart, powerful woman. She, so, like, I, I, to her, I think, this I think is like, for her, this is, like, someone who's finally... I think for both of them, actually, it's finally finding someone who's on that same level of, like, intellect yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. um, like, or, and someone who's, like, just as ruthless as the other one is. Yeah, who's exactly. Like a, who's, like, doesn't, like feel the need to abide by, like, conventional ethics. Like, a little sociopathic, but in a fun way. <laughs> yeah, in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, after this, Elisa is, like, she's, like, all depressed as she's leaving. Uh, but then, once she's out of the prison, she pulls the old tape recorder reveal. Mm -hmm. She recorded the whole conversation. <laughs> Uh-oh! Spicy! So, yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. This is this is getting good now. So yeah. she has what she needs to give to Derek. Brilliant! Just that whole sequence is brilliant with Fox yeah, like, and I Martin. like that Elisa. Like you think that like Elisa is just like not getting what she needs, but then it turns out she does got what she needs. Mm -hmm. and, like Fox is amazing in it. Like you get more insight into Xanatos. Like it's a really good scene. Yes. Um, yes. So in, the, in the parking lot, Goliath, like, swoops down. He lands in a fucking car. Like, he surprises like, the hell out of Lisa by yeah, landing like, on a fucking car. Yeah, like, she starts out. I feel like he left a huge impression of, like, his ass on the roof of the car, too. Yeah, um, they're just gonna go out and see two giant boulder <laughs> dents in the top just, of their car. They're just, like, what the just fuck? Just <laughs> uh, But he, he tells her that Derek and Xantos, they left on a helicopter uh, faster than he could follow, but they were heading north. And Elisa's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, they were probably heading to Xanadu, his upstate retreat. Yes. Which is the only time this place is mentioned, Xanadu. So, okay, uh, okay, <laughs> what I like about, like, how it transitions <laughs> over to Xanatos and Derek, they're leaving his retreat, but, like, what were they doing there in the first place? They like, were what, fucking... Like, what was going on inside the retreat? Did you, like, at least... Sex like, was happening. I want Elisa, just like a scene where she just like pistol whipped Xantos. Did you fuck my brother? Yes! <laughs> I would love that! Or like during the last like argument she has with Derek at the end, if she's like, and are you fucking him? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I need some sort of a reaction from her that this is happening. Does it, like, very clearly is. Mm -hmm. um, Owen is not to be seen for the rest of the episode either. Like, I, I feel like Xantos was like, you know. I don't want my new boyfriend to meet my old boyfriend, so let's, like, keep them separate for now. Like, I don't want any, like, jealous feelings coming out. Or, like, I don't want to explain to Derek, like, what a poly relationship is, because he's, mm -hmm. like, too limited to understand. I that. remember, uh, who was it that made that, um, three-way art with, uh, Xanatos, uh, Fox, and, uh, Owen? I don't know. Okay, it, was, it wasn't, like, loot or anything. It was just, like, both of them just, like, around Owen, and Owen's just, like, super flustered and everything. Oh, that sounds cute. Like, like it was really it was really nice. Um, I love these evil bad guys. I think I retweeted it when we kids. first started, like, our Twitter account, somewhere around that time. It was a while back. Probably. So, okay, before we see Derek and Xantos leaving the compound, though, we see, um... Well, well, first, let's fix... Has, he's fixed the helicopter by now. So they're, like, 
on their oh, way yeah. over. He also, he's also put, like, new decals on it. Like, I guess he had spare time. This is like, interesting. All the, all the pack bullshit is, like, off the helicopter. This now. is in, like, one day, and not to mention he can't even build it during the day because he turns to stone. Yeah, like, when did he do this? And, like, uh, it's it's fine. I'm just going to ignore the helicopter as best I can. It's fine. Uh, we also see Hyena and Jackal, like, sneaking up on the compound. They're wearing, like, cool, like, skin-tight stealth suits. Mm -hmm. um, and they have, like, night vision goggles. Like, they're all decked out. <laughs> this is, like, Metal Gear right now. It, it looks sort of like Metal Gear. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, um, what's that other game? Uh, I can't think of it right now. It's fine. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, okay. okay, so they're, uh, like, Zan a, Zanatos and Dark finish they're gonna, tr they're gonna try uh, and take out Xanatos. Right, so Xanatos is telling Derek, he's like, that was excellent flying last night. I'm more convinced than ever that I was right to hire you as my personal boyfriend and fuck toy. Yeah. And Derek's all like, I hope that I don't have to do that regularly, and Xanatos is like, oh, my life is anything but boring. You rather surprised me, there. Derek, with your experience in tossing the salad. I think I learned a few oh my of those... God! I think I learned a few of those moves during my stay in prison. Yeah, I think that happened too. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Absolutely. So as they're, as they're, you know, dispensing sexual innuendo to each other, yes. um, Jack and the Hyena, like, shoot out the light that's over them, mm -hmm. um, and then, like, Derek, like, tackles them to the ground, and, like, he pulls his gun, but, like, they're about to die. Like, Jack and Hyena have them in their sights. Mm -hmm. um, but before they pull the trigger, um, the Gargoyle's new helicopter shows up. Uh, let's see, it shines, like, really blight floodlights on them that, like, they have to tear off their night vision goggles for because, like, it's too bright. Um, they're running away. Lexington shoots a net that, like wraps around them we got a really cool shot of hyena like being super badass and like very anime because she cuts through the net with her like two knives and like it looks crazy mm -hmm. um then the dark girls like fly out of the helicopter or chase after them there's just like sort of like a you know a chase scene there is one intensely hot moment where broadway like grabs jackal from behind yes and then and then, like, knocks him out with a God. single punch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just, Broadway looks really, really good. Yeah, in yeah. In this scene. I, um, I, and then, like, he dusts his hands off afterwards. Like, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I love Broadway's, like, shoulders, too. Like, I, yeah. want, I want to, like, I want to climb them. Uh huh. I want to like, conquer them. Like, he's Plant a. Plant a flag in them. I want to climb him like he's a tree. Yeah. Speaking, uh, speaking of, of trees, trees. <laughs> X, yes, good. Hyena almost knocks herself out by like just running into one, and then she's and then like she just starts shooting randomly. Yeah, like, she starts shooting trees. everywhere because she like I I think is... she's panicking, but she's not acting like she's panicking. No, this I think is... she just okay. wants to destroy all the trees. See, see okay, this is interesting because Hyena is the kind of person who's like I have to get what I want and I'm gonna kill anything that gets in my way. And this is like mm -hmm. what happens when you like have a caged animal like cornered, like they just start lashing out at everything around just them, at, like everything. Like yeah. this is like her last resort. She's not going down. No one's gonna take her down. No one can take her mm -hmm. down. This is why the pack is insane. They all have this, like, kind of, like, sort of self-beneficial complex, like they're fucking animals. Uh -huh. And they're named after they, animals, like, too! Yeah, they're furries. They are. They're, they're all they're all animal kins. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Brooklyn gets, like, crushed underneath the tree that falls on him. Like, one of the few things heavier than Broadway's ass. Yes, yes. Uh, he can't, like, get out from under it. He's, like, struggling and straining. He, he looks kind of hot. Yeah. Um, then Lexington comes in the helicopter again and he like he's able to shoot this pinpoint blast that like only destroys hyena's gun mm -hmm. like that that was pretty awesome uh, broadway comes over he like lugs the tree off of brooklyn there's a lot of groaning mm -hmm. and moaning there's in this part. one part where he's like holding the tree that you screenshot 
screenshotted and like I, I, i'm gonna definitely share this one shot on twitter yeah yeah and uh, like brooklyn, their, their positions look uh it looks like he's about to shove the tree up like brooklyn's ass because like brooklyn's like on all fours like in front of him while he's holding brooklyn the tree has this expression like he's like orgasming like it's it's very sexual looking and like, Broad- like he's on all fours His broadway's is, like, broadway's jaw out. is like dropped like damn i couldn't even know i could do this oh my god yeah um, but I, okay, so Hyena's trying to keep fighting, though, like, she pulls her knife out, she's like, mm-hmm. you won't take me alive, but then Elisa, like, has a gun on her, and then, like, I guess Hyena just decides to give up, actually, because fight's over after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit later, we see all the gargoyles, and they're watching Elisa talking to Xanatos and Derek. Um, so... <laughs> Xanatos says a funny line. He's all like, Detective, I'm sure your brother was more than capable of handling the situation, but thank <laughs> you for your help, just the same. Oh my god. Now, you'd probably like a private moment. And he just he just walks away. We don't see him for the rest of the episode. That's No, he just, he's just a smug bitch. He's like, I've done everything I wanted to do. Now I'll just let the pieces fall. I don't need to do anything else. And he just leaves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the gargoyles are just standing off to the side, and... Derek, well, this scene is so awkward because it's like there's been so much tension this whole episode of like mm-hmm. telling Derek about the gargoyles, and then it's like then it's revealed here that Derek was already informed about the gargoyles by Xanatos. Uh huh. Yeah, he says they are, so they are real, and then Elisa says, "What do you mean? I didn't tell you about them." And he says, "No, Xanatos did though. He showed me a videotape of them before we fucked, so he could get himself in the mood. Mm-hmm. But I still find it hard to believe that they're real." And then Elise is like, Xanatos told you about them? So, like, yeah, it, he makes it clear that, like, Xanatos has definitely given him, like, his side of the story and, like, made himself look good, basically. Yeah, um, I, I, it's like he knows that, like, this is gonna piss Elisa off. I think that's why he's, he's like, planting the seeds. <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Derek says, like, uh, yeah, he said he tried to help them, but they rejected him. He also admitted he made a few mistakes in dealing with them. And with you. <laughs> oh my god. And I, I, Elisa's like, a few mistakes? Like, Elisa's trying to, like, tear her brother's head off. Like, I, you don't understand, like, what actually happened. And it's uh. interesting that Derek is even bringing all this up, because it's like, why are you, like, trusting this billionaire dude who's, like, hiring you to, like, like... You know, actually, given the pay- the payment he gets, um, you know, I could probably understand. Derek's well, situation. we know it's a lot of money. Yeah, like, we don't know how much, but like, it's like Xanatos is loaded. Look. I'm sure, I'm sure he spared no expense in getting Elisa's brother. Yeah, Isaac, but like trusting you know? the guy over your sister is questionable. I gotta say, I working know, for him like, is different. This is sort of like a master stroke on Xanatos' part. Just like telling Derek about the dark rules was like. Like the like the whole goal of this whole episode, like this was the only way for Elisa to like make Derek understand. But now by Zen oh, doing that's it first, what, like he that's poisoned what the Fox whole well. meant by like miles ahead. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> God, this like, is this is Elisa's actually been several steps behind him the entire time. This is a better Xanatos episode than The Edge. I just got to say it. This this definitely is yeah the, like this is sort of Xanatos like he's, and it's he's even diabolical. and it's even better because it hints at like Fox's whole thing with Xanatos and I love their dynamic and I can't wait to see more of that as mm-hmm. we go along. Oh, it's trying to be so good. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So okay, so they're just they're sort of going back and forth. Lisa's like he's using you, like can't you see that? And Derek's like no, he appreciates me for who I am, which you don't. And then, like, eventually, Goliath gets so fucking Oh my pissed. god. His pecs swell, like, four sizes bigger. Yeah! And he just, like, flexes really, Oh like, my god. He does a lot of flexing for no apparent reason, but just because this is Goliath. Mm-hmm. And And he starts lecturing them. Um, he says, quiet, both of you. You don't know how lucky you are to have siblings to fight with. All of my Rickery brothers are dead, and there is nothing, nothing more important than family. I like, I was okay. so glad that Goliath did that because I couldn't stand any more of like the whole Derek and Elisa <sighs> rivalry this episode. He's so fucking tired of people arguing yeah! around him. He's like, all of you need to fucking stop. Like you're pissing me off. Mm-hmm. This uh, is actually um a really good initiative to take off uh, for him because it's like, 
Okay, I just lost my train of thought, but I was just gonna say, like, this is actually, like, you know... Okay, here we go. Um, he's using his past experience and where he is now to become a better leader, which is what we've all been waiting on. Yes. We haven't seen yes, that in, in recent times as of lately, but I like that like, choice. I, like, I don't know if he would have been capable of, like of settling this fight like unless he'd gone through all this other trauma which has like changed him as a person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna keep seeing that develop as the show goes along i've been wrong about a lot this week you don't have to be a cop and you do have to lead your own life but i wasn't wrong about xanatos and she gives derek the tape recording and she's all like listen to her or not it's up to you it's your own life. And, like, that's that's the end of the scene. Like, they all just leave after that. And we don't ever find out if Derek actually listens to the tape recording or not. Because the, the scene just closes up him holding it and, like, looking at it. And, like, deciding if he will or not. Do you think he listens to it? Uh, I forget where he is when season two begins. Um, I know he'll still be working for Xanatos, and, like, I think he'll be happy in his job, and Lisa's still... Well, that implies... Like, Lisa's still trying to, like, get him to quit, but it's more like a friendly banter by this point, uh, I think, to so me, I don't know if he ever listens to it, though. To me, that implies that he doesn't. Maybe it'll be... Yeah, he probably decides not Maybe to. it was addressed, and it, we forgot, but, like, I... If... Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think the next episode will be Metamorphosis. No, it's Reawakening, isn't it? But the, the next one with, with Derek in it. Unless oh! Okay, so the next time we see Derek, it's when he's, like, completely turned into, like, a furry. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, with that, um, it, it begins to snow, uh, and we see them back at the tower, um, and they're getting on their perches, uh, Brooklyn and Broadway finally settled their argumentative differences they'd had this whole episode with Lexington. Um, it's so cute. It yeah, is. Broadway is like, hey, Lex, good job on that helicopter. And Brooklyn's like, yeah, that armor really did help. And then Lex, is, you know, he accepts it with grace. He's like, oh, well, I couldn't have done it without you two. So, like, yeah. everyone's forgiven. That was very it's mature cute. of him, yes. I, I love them all. So, like, every sibling argument has been settled. In some I don't form even. Or I don't even know if like Elisa and Derek's like whole thing is ever settled. I think. Well, even... like, it's it's settled as it's gonna be for today. Yeah. And Lina and Jackal, they never had an argument. They're just awesome, but now they're in prison. So I guess. <laughs> I forgot they went to prison. I just like completely forgot that. They... <laughs> I forgot about them because I was so annoyed by the whole Derek and Elisa. Like, do you think Jackal is gonna get like? Is he gonna have to drop the soap around Wolf like every day now? Um, they're in the same prison. Together. We we do they're, know I think they're gonna be roommates. He, aren't we they? do know that they become cellmates. Yes. Oh my god. I really don't think Jackal is Wolf's type, to be quite honest. Okay, but it's prison, though. And, like, Wolf doesn't have any other options. Yeah, but so it's think... prison, though, so Wolf has plenty of other options. Oh, uh, maybe. I Okay, I feel like this is my own headcanon, and you can feel free to disagree with it. I think that he'll just use Jackal's mouth, like, whenever... He just needs like something. He's a little like, I can I can either Thrust see I see two possibilities <laughs> with Wolf in prison. I wish that this episode explored some of that aspect, but I mean, hey, this isn't an HBO show, you know? No. No. Not yet. Not yet. Um anyways, uh so with Wolf in prison, I see two things happening. Either he stays the repressed uh, psychopath he is and just kind of like, just like studies like these other muscular prisoners from afar. <laughs> like, and just like, just like, yeah, I so bet, that I, bet I, them down I bet I can beat them up. I could, are. I should probably yeah. challenge them to a fight right now. What's stopping Not me? Not because they have like really good bodies or like hot muscles or but anything. That, no, that's, no way. that's him if he takes a more reserved route. Or, um, once Jackal gets to prison, he finally has like someone he can somewhat confide in because he they uh, sorry i they because they work together um and it's it's like the closest thing he can get familiar with do you think he'd reveal all of his most private thoughts to jackal they share a cell like, together so i think uh -huh. I, I don't think jackal would be interested in that at all but i feel like 
he'd have to put up with some of Wolf's Yeah, he'd antics. have to, like, pretend at least, or else, like, Wolf will just scrub his face, like, into his armpit. And, oh. You know, just every day. I wonder, like, maybe it's dur- maybe it's from. during their prison stay together that Jackal finally learns that, like, Wolf is, like, low-key a closeted homosexual. Maybe. Well, not even... I feel like he already knows. Not even low-key, just like he is. Uh, just he He's is. gay. He's very, very gay. He's gay. I can't express how much Wolf is gay. Oh, he's gay, is he? I, he, he doesn't even know women <laughs> exist. Oh, yeah, they're invisible to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, what happened to the helicopter? Did We never see it again after this. Do they? Is it parked somewhere in New York? Is it still at Xanadu? You know. Where's the helicopter? You know. They never use it again. Sometimes you eat the bar. Sometimes <laughs> the bar eats you. So, uh, that was a great episode. Uh, what would you rate it out of five loincloths, Croup? Um. So initially, I thought this would be like. A two long yeah, thoughts, but cause... like on watching it, I actually really, really like this episode. I would say like, like not a four, but maybe like a three point five, like a three or a three point five is what I would rate it. Hmm, you're becoming much more like stricter with your rating scale as the show's oh, gone along. You know, I I know what I like. I'm I'm saving the best ratings for season two. I, I know there's a bunch I'm, I'm of really still, good episodes in it. I'm still like shocked that like last episode was the one you've rated like the worst rating to. Cause it was bad, in my opinion. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like there there are a few stinkers this season, but like I feel like I thought that like the tail end of season one wasn't that good, but like this episode I really liked. So maybe the next one will also be. Good. I we'll think. Have to see. I think I'm on the same level with you on this episode, though. Um, there, are, like I said, the whole Derek and Elisa plotline annoyed me. I really am not a fan of their dynamic. Uh, mm-hmm. but I love like everything else. With like, I like the trio stuff a lot. I love the trio I liked stuff. I everything with Jackal and Hyena. Jackal like, and all Hyena. Their stuff was all really. I good. love the scene with Fox. Yeah. Uh, um. I, I love Fox, honestly. Just, like, I, I really resonate with her. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing, but... Like that, that one scene with Fox probably bumped up my, my rating by at least, like, half a point. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was, it was pretty um, good. But, yeah, I, I think I'm on the same scale as you. 3.5, probably closer to 4 than 3. Maybe a 3.75. No, I don't want to get that articulate. Maybe, maybe a 3.6. <laughs> okay. Um, horniest moment. Horniest moment. I actually, um, I'm trying to think of what the horniest moment might be. I'm willing to hear your contenders first, though. Okay, I only have one contender. It's the locker room. It's Morgan Morgan in the towel, and it's Matt Bluestone's ass. You know... And I, I know I hate to put Matt Bluestone I know, as the I know, horniest part of the episode... But... But it's a man in very tight briefs, and the, he's got a nice-looking body. The only and the, the other just went out and gave that to us. The only other scene I could consider <laughs> is probably like when Broadway punches out Jackal. That was really hot too. Um, and that's a really high contender, but I think I gotta or, go. Or the part where Broadway like landed on Brooklyn, I liked a lot. Yeah, that too. Anything with like Brooklyn or Broadway landing on people is just hot. Because yeah. that seems to happen a lot. Imagine if his ass just, like, landed on your face. I have. And, like, yeah, you couldn't, like, um, get out from under it. But, yeah, I think I gotta agree with the locker room scene being the horniest moment. Because, like, if the moment is so horny, it leads me to check out, like, one of the blandest characters in the show. <laughs> uh, without realizing it, mind you. And then feel dirty afterwards when you realize who it is. This is like when you like look at some hot like uh, actor or character, and then you learn like they're a piece of shit, and you're like, oh god damn it! But still, yeah, you know, it was kind of kind of hot when I first saw them, so I'll just leave mm. that memory. That's how I feel about this. So, um, yeah. Good on you, Matt Bluestone. You. It's so funny how we like. You're one and only we, horniest. We moment dish on him so much, but we gave him the horniest moment. I mean, yeah. He just showed up <laughs> naked. That's it. 
That's all you really have to do. I guess. Uh... Ooh. Who are the Deus characters? Um, or character? Definitely... Derek and Xanatos. Yeah, I, I said characters because I was already thinking like it has to be the two of them. Yeah, I I I, th I would have to say them because I don't know who else would probably fit the slot. I mean, Lexington had a few kind of like uh, moments where he wanted to find someone who understood him, kind of like that was beneath okay, the surface. Yeah, the part where he was like, "I'll tell you both what to do," like, "Don't worry, boys, I'll tell you what to do," and like Brooklyn and Broadway both looked really annoyed. Does mm -hmm. like Lexington is like flexing his like dom muscles, and they're just like they don't know how they feel about it yet. Like I didn't think that was sort of horny. Yeah. Well, that's we're we're on gayest character, not horniest moment. Yeah, but like that was gay of Lexington. Yeah, but uh, Derek and Xanatos, I would probably say are the gayest. You know, I think I think that I think that they're gay. Like he put a whole scheme into place to seduce Elise's brother away from, like, the rest of the family and mm -hmm. into his employ, mm -hmm. where now he can just, like, think of what he's doing to Derek's, like, ass, his, he's draining his balls, like, every single day, like, what is Owen doing? Is Owen watching them as this happens and you just, know... like, crying and sobbing, but also, like, masturbating himself as this is going on? I feel like, um... I feel sort of bad for Owen. Yeah, absolutely, because I definitely feel like whenever Xanatos and Fox are bored from all the fucking, like, they call in Owen and they just, like, kind of, like, have him humiliate them himself oh in God. front of are them. They have, like, a three-way, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. There's been, there's definitely probably been three ways. Like, they don't even, like, use Xanat, like, Owen as, like, a fucking, uh, like, a sex partner. They literally just, like, treat him like he's just, like, an object to both of their, like, like he's a sex yeah, toy. Yeah, like... Fox just calls him the boy toy. He's a fuck stick. I've... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Derek and Xanatos. Mm -hmm. The winners. Okay. What else is there to do? Is that the episode? Um, I think just about, actually. Uh, we... we are so close to the end of season one now. I know, we're just this one episode exciting. away. This is exciting. We've come a long way. A lot of a lot has happened. Uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. Should we do plugs again? I thought we were gonna do like the one email we got. Oh, I forgot about the email. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you remembered it. Yeah, okay. I don't have it open. I do. So this is from Spiffy Goblin. Oh, I love Spiffy. He's a follower. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's been listening to a while. I think this is his first email, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I know that he he's done fan art of the show. There, there's this one, he drew this one hilarious fan art based on um that one joke I made of Owen having to uh, relay the live Yes, I love that. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know we've retweeted it on oh, the Loincloth Hour God. Twitter. I it's, love that. It's basically amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he's also drawn, like, sexy Lexington art, like, based on stuff that we've and said. I think he also sketched Hudson, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. he drew the one of, of Hudson in that harness, I think. Yeah. That's yes. first got my attention from him. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So he's a, he's a really good artist. Yeah, yeah. I hope he I continues like, to draw hot I like Gargo Spiffy, pictures, yeah. I hope. Uh, um, so let's see his email. Hmm? What is? I was just going to ask, what does he have to say in his email? He says, Hi, all. I had meant to email you before the previous episode, but I guess better late than never. I wanted to say that I absolutely loved the episode you guys did on Gildamesh a while back. Mm. I've read up on it and had heard that it had some occasional homoerotic subtext, but some of that was way more explicit than I had realized. I really appreciate Krupp delving into all that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to hear you guys talk more about the various, uh, they're just really good friends from mythology and history in the future. Achilles and Patroclus, King David and Prince Jonathan, Heracles and most men he encountered, etc. Whether gargoyles or mythology, I'm looking forward to hearing more horny hot tapes from you guys. Keep up the amazing work. Spiff. Yay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that you liked that episode. I liked it a lot, too. I don't know how many people listened to it. If you haven't, though, 
you should, because there's so much horny stuff in, in the epic of Kill mm-hmm. Tamesh that I was, like, unprepared for. I need to plug that uh, the episode more. I think that was on me. Like, I didn't put up enough hot art of Dilgamesh for it. Yeah, so you kind of didn't seem like you were in the week. mood for it. I hit, like, a depressive episode for, like, a couple weeks recently, so, like, that sort of hampered a lot of things. Yeah. But uh, I am coming out of it now. Like, I've been feeling much better the last week or so. Yeah, I can tell. So, yeah, I expect some more posting to happen Absolutely. Soon. And as for uh, doing future episodes like that, I don't see why not. It's definitely a subject uh, both Krupp and I are interested in. Um, We plan on doing more bonus episodes and possibly some other future activities for the One Cloth Hour. Um, Uh I know know there's at least one based on uh, the Hercules, like the Disney Hercules cartoon show that we want to do. Yes, yeah. I I watched... um, that one episode with Orion in it, and he was very hot, like very big, beefy, mm-hmm. manly man, man doing man things. And Hercules like sees him as a role model and wants to do manly man, man things with him. <laughs> and he and there's at least one where like all the gods are like taking a bath or something, and they're not wearing very much. Yeah, yeah, no, um, I uh, I like that one. Um, I like seeing Zeus wearing nothing but a towel. Uh, mm-hmm. I I think like the animation is definitely more like uh, terrible compared to the movie, but still, um, you can never go wrong with seeing Zeus in a towel. Um, Looking very buff. Mm-hmm. His golden like muscles and his long curled, um, delicate hair, his beard uh, hair. His like whole personality too, which is just like he's just down to fuck like at any time I, I, with anyone. I don't express how um much I appreciate characters with beards like Hudson or Zeus or just like anyone in that kind of retrospect. Even Wolf has like a good like chiseled beard and everything. And it's not like you know That's true. It's not styled, they just let it grow out all grizzled. Like I wanna bury my face in their hair. <laughs> Like, I just, I I want to live in their beards. Be like a little forest elf. Be, I was going to say like a little gnome. Mm. <laughs> That's adorable. You know, what's the difference between gnomes and forest elves? Please don't answer that. That was rhetorical. It, it depends if we're talking, are we talking like old mythology? Are we talking like D&D? <laughs> like what, it depends what system we're talking about. Oh, you, you answered it anyway. <laughs> ah! <laughs> It's fine, I'm just messing with you. Um, I know I wanted to do a bonus episode on some LGBT music history, but I don't know how to make that horny yeah. is the thing. I mean, mm. um, because I want to talk about this one group I'm, I uh, absolutely adore called Coil, which is um, one of the uh, groundbreaking post-industrial acts of... Um, of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. They were very underground, but they were formed... It was actually formed by two gay men who were very obsessed with, like, um, like occult symbology and, like, just spirituality, uh, sexuality, fluidity, just... Um, I, I know they, they probably practiced with a lot of LSD when they were making music. I remember some of their early... Uh, on stage performances were very BDSM oriented. I remember seeing in their Color Sound Oblivion compilation, like their early, this like 30 minute excerpt from one of their early shows. It's very strange and bizarre and like crudely sexual because they're both on stage like wearing thongs, but like they're not like, they're like, wow. they're wearing, see, it's like, okay, it's weird art shit. They're on some stage wearing thongs and I think there's like, a bunch of like ropes and wires like tangled around them they're wearing masks um so like it's meaningful but like it's still kinky yeah i wouldn't say you know <laughs> it's meaningful in like a dark way like everything seems very ritualistic um in this performance um and i i, I think at one point they rub like either i think it's either fake blood or like like animal blood on each other um And I remember it was really interesting reading later that uh, Nick Cave, another musician who I adore, was actually in the audience for that particular performance. Nice. Um, He was inspired. Yes, yes. Nick Cave is also, like, he's a moderately, not underground, but he's moderately famous uh, songwriter from the 80s and 90s, and he still makes music. Hmm. So I feel like 
you just gave us a preview of what an episode about that would be, so I feel like you could definitely do that. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. I, if you if you want to, hmm, I feel like there's a couple ways we could do an episode like that, like either talk about all these different groups and bands, mm-hmm. or we could talk about like music videos maybe, because I know there's a bunch of homoerotic music videos out there. I'm not or, really, uh... see, it's like, I'm not really a music video kind of guy. I, mm. I like music mm-hmm. videos, I do, but like most of the time when I'm listening to music, I'm not checking out the music videos on YouTube or any shorts or anything like that. I like to focus on the lyrics, I like learning about the band's history, I like learning about like the themes and symbols they put into their work, um, stuff like that. Just a bunch of weird artsy shit, but I mean, I know Coil has a few music videos you can check out. Maybe I could send you some? Yeah, I should watch them. You say uh, it, you say it as you're yawning. <laughs> I, I wasn't intending to sound bored, I was just yawning. Uh, th- did I, I think I did send you the music video for Coil's cover of Tainted Love, which was actually, uh, readdressed to be about the AIDS epidemic that was happening at the time. Ooh, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting because these are, you know, men who identify as gay, and they're also making this cover of a famous song, and the music video is really interesting too, because they have like flies they're pouring honey on top of, and they, they, they show like men pushing other men in wheelchairs and helping them into their hospital beds and stuff, and the whole time you just hear this like ominous, you know, lyrical delivery of tainted love with like electronic frequencies and stuff. Hmm. I make it sound cooler than it actually is though. <laughs> No, that sounds very cool, though. You probably sound it, made it sound less cool than it actually is. Maybe, maybe. It sounds very cool. Um, I, I know, know if that sounds made any sense. I know John Balance, who is the frontman of Coil, um, sometimes his vocal deliveries are a bit, like, off-key with the music. Um, I think in that particular music video, his vocals are, like, mixed kind of poorly, but at the same time, I think it's more about the meaning behind what they're doing rather than the music itself. I'm sorry. I'm just a huge art nerd. I just went into a tangent. <laughs> Guys, if you want a whole episode on weird <laughs> music and art from Sid and me mostly just nodding along and saying aha uh-huh, once in a while, <laughs> email us and tell us so. Or send us a message through Twitter. Uh, Loincloth Hour uh, at Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much at, I think that would be at, awesome. at I think that would be hour. Really fun. I would definitely have fun making that. Um and I like talking to you about that kind of stuff in general, so just doing an episode about that would be perfect. Yes. Uh, time machine noise. We come from the future with an important email from Biff our... Bob <laughs> Nizbot. <laughs> Did you just say Bob <laughs> Nizbot? I'm making f- future noises, because we're, like, time travelers. Oh, yeah, no, we are. This is, like, um, this is, like, that movie, uh, with the, the time traveling. Like, the time traveler's wife. I've never seen that, or... Or, or the time machine, where they... Oh, the I, I remember... They live in the sewers, and they're mutants, and then the X-Men fight them. I remember, like, seeing a movie on, like, the Disney Channel about, like, a time machine, and the guy, like, tries to go back and, like, stop his, wi- his like, wife from dying or something, but, like, every oh. time he does, she, like, dies in a different way. It's, like, destiny. Yeah. That's sad. I hope that he found a way for her not to die. I, I... Or maybe... I hope that he, like, accepted that some things he can't change and to find, like, solace in that information. One or one of those two things, I hope, happened. I was in a motel watching it late at night, so I never really finished it. I kind of fell asleep halfway through, but, like, uh, I hope that happened, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. we got an we got an email uh, regarding this episode late, and we wanted to include it in because Remy's been so good with, like, you know, the information and the scheduling, and, you know, um, I wanted to include his email into this episode because he's been such a, he, he's, he's a good, he's a good fan, he's a good viewer. He's our, he's our favorite emailer. He is. This is that snarky Remy on Twitter, mm-hmm. he's also in for Affinity. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's the best. He's our favorite emailer. So here, here is his email. Yep. Uh, do you do you have it up? Uh, let me. 
Hold on. <laughs> Listen, I was ready, but I, I wasn't ready, ready, if you catch my drift. You were ready in some ways. I was, yeah. I mean... All right. So, Remy says, hello again, the Loincloth Hour crew. Thanks for a great last episode you made. A fitting tribute to Mr. Asner. It was... A great episode you guys did with plenty of funny moments and lots of insight. I'm with Sid. I liked the episode, mainly due to how good the spotlight was on Hudson for the, a great fight scene near the end. And it's always great to have Haran present as well. You three are great together. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, um, although you're wrong. The episode was bad. You know... I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to your opinion. No, 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 no. I'm glad that you found joy in that episode, <laughs> even if I didn't. Yeah, and, uh... I think that's a good positive thing. He continues, oh boy, here we go, <laughs> the Derek episode. By golly, did Derek dumbfuck Maza make an awful <laughs> impression in this episode? I, I agree, but, you know, uh, everybody has their different opinions. Um, he continues, it's supposed to be that he wants to be his own man, quote, live his life as he wants it, but throughout the whole episode he came across as a whiny, condescending, petulant, stupid, and just a complete asshole in so many ways. From his bad attitude to his constant erroneous thinking that Elise is just trying to control his life, this dude is just awful. I hated how he talked down to Elisa from the start. She's a seasoned and successful con detective with a good conviction rate, yet he talks to her and treats her like she's a dumb child, never once giving her the benefit of the doubt, or considering that she might just be right about Xanatos, not even suspecting when Xanatos just offers him a job out of the blue, like it's too good to be true. Ooh, Dr. Seuss. Um, and then there's, uh, <laughs> that tape recorder at the end where Elisa has actual proof that she's right. I think some people forget about that tape recorder, but I sure as hell never did. Thank goodness this oh infuriating God. moron doesn't appear much during the series, but damn, every time he appears, he's such an obnoxious pain in the ass. Remy has all the receipts on Derek. Yeah! Lisa. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the tape recorder, like, does irk me. Just, like... If he had listened to it, I feel like a lot of the stuff that happens later wouldn't happen. Yeah. Like, he's, he is an idiot. <laughs> uh, he's just like, you know what? You want to be this way? Fine. Go live your life. Do what you want. Yeah, like, become, become a mutated furry. Like, whatever. And then, like, the Always Sunny it's, title it's card comes now. in, and it just says, <laughs> Derek becomes a mutant furry. Yes! <laughs> Um, I'm very much on the same page as Remy when it comes to Derek, uh, in this episode particularly. I think that, you know, like I, was, like I said before when we recorded the episode, I think, uh, Derek, uh, spends so much time, uh, trying to blow off Elisa or even, like, try to, like, ignite the whole sibling rivalry thing, like, where he has his own, um... Like, I, he lets other people's thoughts about him shape, like, his decision-making too much to the point mm. where he just, like, completely comes across as ignorant. Um, and Kroop... If only he'd had, like, a better loving father growing up, he might have, you know, not done these stupid-ass things. You know, he... I, I don't... Mazda. I don't think he... You know, I think he had a pretty decent upbringing. I, I'm still... I'm still blaming it on the dad. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame the dad personally because he's voiced by Hawk from Twin Peaks, and I'm just like, you know, I can't, oh I can never put it on Hawk. He's just a great guy. Um, and there's more to this email too. Uh, there's a lot of uh, dishing on Greg Weissman, um, but I'm just gonna read it, and we we'll see what we can do here. Okay, let's see what happens. On a separate note, you know what? Fuck Greg Wiseman and his lame-ass explanation on why we never saw the helicopter again, which, as he says, they used it as a planter? What? Did he- That's the excuse what? he gave? <laughs> a planter? What, like, for, like, a garden? Yeah. Well, like, because that's the joke that Brooklyn made when, it, like, it first crashed. He was like, what are we gonna do with it now? Use it as a planter. Is that- Oh my god. Yeah, that's- that's actually <laughs> stupid. 
Um, <laughs> no, I, I remember you had mentioned <laughs> they they never used the helicopter again, and they originally... yeah, after Xanadu, we just we never see it again. Yep, yep. And you said that they were originally going to make that part of like the toy franchise. I don't know. Uh, Remy gets into that a bit too as you go on. Uh, yeah, well, okay. From from my knowledge, the toy company that they were working with for the show wanted them to include a helicopter in an episode because they were planning to make the toy of it. Mm -hmm. But then, after this episode, like the company just never actually made that helicopter. I think they they couldn't figure out a way for it to work with the gargoyle figures that they'd already made, like with their wings, like it wouldn't fit or something. Right, right. So they never even made the toy that they like forced the cartoon crew to like include in this episode. So it's just like it's just weird. Thanks, Disney. <laughs> Like I don't I don't know what company it was. I can look that up, but yeah. Uh I you know, I'm just gonna blame Disney for everything. Yeah, that's fine, because a lot of stuff is their fault. Okay, so he continues. I liked the helicopter as a kid and I still like it to this day. Not only is it pretty cool, but it's also a testament to Lexington's genius. It's amazing how he prepared repaired, I mean, and repurposed a whole goddamn helicopter in such a short time. As for why we never saw it again, it, it's an extremely simple logical reason. These are gargoyles who count on Elisa to get them stuff like a TV and toys, and she still has her own expenses, so there's no fucking way she could keep a helicopter designed for battle running on a constant basis. No way they can afford materials to keep it loading, loaded with weapons. And then there's gas costs, too. Simply put, they couldn't afford to keep it. Simple as that. So, once again, fuck Greg Wiseman for his lazy explanation on what happened to the helicopter. Also, fuck him for the train wreck that was Young Justice Outsiders, but that's a rant for another day. I still need to watch Outsiders. I watch. I know that. I know that he runs a fan. I don't know. I haven't. Seen I've it only seen yet. like the first season of Young Justice, and this was a while back, mind you. Yeah, I think I've seen like the first two seasons, and I, I liked both of those. Yeah, but, uh... I liked what I saw. Um. And, but yeah, I I agree with Remy on the helicopter thing. Like all the explanations he gave make sense. I I just would have liked if they had like see, acknowledged that or like had at least like a line be like, "Too bad we couldn't keep the helicopter." I think um, and, like, to make a joke like, "Yeah, but gas doesn't come cheap," or you know something like that. I think uh, Greg Wiseman, you know, when he's answering these questions on his blog, which is what I assumed is where he said they used it as a planter. Um, I think, like, the main problem is, like, he doesn't have, like, any other, like, writers or anyone to, like, help him work off of, like, some of these plot points, give him ideas, so he's literally kind of, like, on his own, I guess, because he made the show, and uh -huh. he's just, like, trying to give his own, you know, consensus on what might have happened, but, like, like, I do think that, um, it, this is, like, the kind of thing you would need, like, another right like a, a team of writers to work off of well i i'm assuming his answer was a little ton in cheek as well like they didn't keep the helicopter because he just didn't want it to be in the show i think I, I, <laughs> I think it's more than a little ton in cheek it's definitely yeah <laughs> definitely a little little uh trying to get some wiggle room in there um, anyways, uh, he finishes off the email. That should be all for now. I'm insanely busy lately and need to ramp my rant up. Thanks again for continuing the great job on your podcast, guys. It's always a bright spot, even on the worst days. Take care, Aww. be well, and best of luck on, on everything. Well, Aww, thank you so much, Snarky Remy, and we hope that you are also as well as you can be every day yes yes thank you for sending this email into the future so we could go back into the past and put it into the present that was wow i i was able to follow that sentence but just barely <laughs> i'm i'm proud of you <laughs> all right i think that's about it for this little uh recording we can like we can end it here i'll, I'll yeah. just edit it in datu rolamba yeah, a womp, bada womp, bump, a womp, bamboo, <laughs> and all that jazz. Okay, are we done now? Yeah, we're done, we're done, we're done. <laughs> um, alright, I think that's about it for this particular episode. Uh, do you want to... It, it was a good one. It was, it was. I, uh, I liked it. 
Um, so, do you want to just uh, leave our plugs and call it? Yeah, let me let me give the plugs again. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Croup on for Affinity. I'm now Spankicorn on Twitter. Mm. I'm uh, Manicorn on Patreon. I blanked, I blanked for a second. Um, if you go to any of those places, I generally have links to everywhere else I am, so you only need one of these names to figure me out. Um, but I, I put out spanking writing, I put out my furry pictures, I put wrestling gifs, I put, like, homoerotic uh, comic panels or, mm -hmm. like, anime caps. So if you like all that shit, find me. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. How about you, Sid? Hello, I'm Sid. I'm Sidney. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at SidScripts, which is my After Dark Twitter, where I mostly just talk about stuff that makes me horny. Um, you can follow me on Fur Affinity, where I post a lot of my, um, not safe for work and adult-oriented, uh, stories. I'm actually working on some personal, uh, stories right now on the side of doing college and now a full-time job. Um, because I'm doing that now. But, yeah, yeah I write about... a crazy week. You started a new job, mm -hmm. you, like, you wrecked your truck, which is now thankful to uh, fix. It's fixed now, yeah, yeah. But my truck did break down on the side of the road earlier last week when I was coming back from job orientation. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I did all that. And if you want to follow my art stuff, you can find me on YouTube at Sir Neutral. Um, I do, like, various edits of, like, live-action TV shows and movies, and I pretty much just put it over music to try and experiment with my editing. Um, I also have a uh, music uh, band camp at Stag in the Headlights. Um, I pretty much make like really weird um, drone poetry and other interesting noisy stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Sweet. Yeah. So we need an outro of some kind. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed the show. It was really fun to make. Now go out and be a hoe. Stay hydrated. Eat your vitamins. That was beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs>